chosen to test this station's destructive power on your home planet of Orton. What? Then name the system Orton. Well, key religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good flash. Sparks are coming up on Alderaan. You may fire when ready. <laughs> Welcome to Alderaan Explosion, the Explosion Network's official countdown to Star Wars Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. It's 14 days until release. My name is Dylan Blight, your Jedi Master, and joining me, my Padawans, Ashley Hobley. Hey, Dylan, excited to be here at the end of the road. Take me home. Kind of. Uh, kind of. Also, here, Kieran Marchant. Oh, that's okay. Thanks, guys. Looking forward to it. We'll have a couple minutes spare once we finish this podcast, judging by the notes, and we'll be able to go straight to the midnight screenings of uh, Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, it's such a broad enough why as we could quickly go over that first. So I, I make the show notes. I share them with everyone. Kieran <laughs> opens up the show notes before we're about to start recording. Ten pages, Dylan! <laughs> Well, normally I show notes on like two or three pages maximum. <laughs> <laughs> this one, and, the, and we're not talking like, you know, te- like 10 pages of, you know, there's like you spaced it out or or it's in a big font or no, it's just 10 pages of just pure writing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know. Gotta be no, prepared. Yeah. Gotta have the notes. This episode, uh, Dylan's adapted the script into note form. So, <laughs> <laughs> watch out for easy. the watch out for the script on eBay coming up. Yeah, yeah, got it. Ooh, that's a uh, story. <laughs> <laughs> so this week on the show, we're going to be discussing the Last Jedi and the reason that the show notes are so much bigger uh, because this time, uh, compared to every other rewatch we've done this season, we're going to be doing a little bit more in-depth because we haven't talked about the movie since uh, our initial reactions review episode that we did uh, back in the day for the first season of the show, obviously. Why didn't we do that for Solo? Uh, It doesn't deserve it. Not a mainline film. I think what you said off... I think what you said off Solo podcast Shemmy. was uh, not a real movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my biasm is uh, probably what caused <laughs> to not get the same treatment. <laughs> and I feel like The Last Jedi being is the movie leading into the one we're about to go watch probably deserves it more than that one. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, for the last time of this season, unless I ask it randomly for <laughs> 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 Rise of Skywalker, uh, Ash, when was the last time you watched The Last Jedi and how did you feel about it with this most recent rewatch? The last time I saw The, Rise, no, the Last Jedi was Christmas Day 2017. Thanks, Track.tv. That's uh, it's a while ago. Is that yeah. because you picked up the Blu-ray at PAX? 20? <laughs> no, I just went and saw it the second time in the cinema on Christmas Day that year. So you haven't seen it? You haven't seen, you haven't it, seen it since the cinema? No. Wow. Yeah, just holy moly! I know, just never felt the desire to diminish it into a smaller screen. I guess, but yeah, oh it's still God. good. I, I enjoyed it. I had a good time. Um, obviously, I'm sure it will come up, but we obviously that collider video <laughs> uh, has slightly diminished that fight scene that was so good. We thought was so good. I remember back in the day, if we watched it on Twitter. They were putting different songs to that track, that fight scene. So cool, everything fit. But, uh, yeah, there's some issues with it. But, yeah, I enjoyed it overall. It's still good. Still good. Still still good, even if it's not on a massive scr- cinema screen. Still be- still one of the most beautiful Star Wars films so far. Yeah. Karen, when was the last time we watched it and how do you feel about it <coughs> with the most um, recent one you watched? Either when it came out on DVD or when it came to... Did it come to Netflix at some point? Was it no. on Netflix here? No, it was never on Netflix. It, it must might have come to Stan. Probably came to stand, possibly. Nah, it's okay. I think it was when it came out on Blu-ray. So, um, I still love this movie. I think I am more critical of this movie now. Like, I think this watching, I there was things that I watched that I think I was a little bit easier of brushing off that I mm. look with a more critical mindset, being you know more interested in Star Wars now and and having experienced more Star Wars um, content now. I think there's, there's some stuff here and there that I'm a bit about. Like, I, I just don't love as much. Or, I, yeah, I don't. Yeah, overall, it hasn't depreciated my appreciation for this movie. Like, I really like this movie. 
I'm definitely in the camp of, no, nah, this was a good Star Wars movie. Um, a hundred percent. And it is the best looking Star Wars movie. Like even the early shots in this movie are just gorgeous and it just keeps getting better. Uh, yeah. So I, I love this movie. I still love this movie. I'd actually say that my, how much I like it has gone up every time I've rewatched it. Um, not gone down, which is interesting. And I'm sure we're going to tackle some of the points uh, and character decisions and whatever else that uh, I feel like we've kind of been teasing every second episode as we bump into them and keep having <laughs> to be like, we'll get to that to when we get to The Last Jedi. We'll get to that when we get to The Last Jedi. So uh, we're finally going to get to that. All right, so not to spend too much time messing around here, let's jump into the movie with my many, many notes as we're going to pretty much go through the movie scene by scene <laughs> as much as we can and stop and discuss things as uh, interesting notes come up for us. going to go the way you think fulfill your destiny I need someone to show me my place in all this so film starts open crawl um, I found it interesting here. It says Band of Resistance Fighters um, makes more sense than Band of Rebel Fighters because that was a thing we'll sing uh, for last week's episode about The Force Awakens where it was like, well, you probably still could have called them Rebel Fighters. But then like w- reading the opening crawl for this movie, I was like, no, Resistance fits way better. Like Band of Rebel Fighters. Yeah, what are they rebelling against? Nothing. They're a Band of Resistance because they're resisting the, Society, the, the last Resistance. Society. Yeah, not, we're not doing the Joker <laughs> review discussion. <laughs> 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 done that one it's done Mental illness. Uh, no. <laughs> so we start uh the movie with the emergency escape of the resistance as um the first order shows up and poe attempts to pull off a crazy move and he talks crap to the first order um all while doing it i remember this being a point of contention with a lot of people because of the mm. comedy that's so early in the movie do you reckon really do you reckon it. prank calls are original idea that poe came up with in this universe like, no one's done a prank what? call before this? Um, no, Obi-Wan no. would have done one. There's Obi-Wan <laughs> has definitely done one before. There's no way that that hasn't happened. Um, well, maybe Hux has never been pranked before. Hard to believe. I, de- but- I definitely don't think Hux has been prank called before. But he has that other dude that is like, he's pulling... He, I can't remember the exact word. He misses, no, he's like, he he's was playing like, in this word, whatever. the wording here actually I felt was really jarring. Yeah. Um, I think he was like, he said, you're tooling. tooling. He's tooling you. And I was like, just say trolling. I was like, I don't know about trolling, but just say like, trolling uh, because then we could have had a gif of a Star Wars person saying trolling. And then we could have used it <laughs> after the last Jedi t- came out. Saying he's tooling you is like very British. Which I don't know. It just, it just felt really weird. Like it just felt like a weird choice of, of wording for him. Like, I don't know. It just was weird. The R-rated version, he just goes, he's fucking around with you, sir. You fucking dickhead. Yeah, messing with you. Um, but no, I, I still love all this, and I still think it works quite well. Star Wars has always had humor. I don't get why people... I still don't understand people's big problem with the jokes here, because they're not, they're not should any have, more silly than anything else. Did they not see Poe in the... the, the- the Literally at the start of The Force Awakens, he's like, you talk first, I talk first. I can't really understand you of all that apparatus on your face. You know, like, yeah. why is that any more silly like, than... <laughs> why don't people have more of a problem with Obi-Wan? Because Obi-Wan is, for me, for much of not just the opening three movies, but if you watch Clone Wars, like, Obi-Wan is that style of humour. Like, most of the time, he is just this shit-talking Jedi. Mr... That- falls down oh hello there yeah <laughs> like exactly like there's just that nature to him that it, it just finds me really weird that people have a problem with poe being like that i think i think i liked poe less in this movie but maybe it's because Whoa. of not maybe i think it's maybe because of, of where the storyline goes of where the storyline goes for poe and then having read more of the book after 
this where imposed change to that and I'm like fuck this is like extremes like I I don't know I find it really weird that the Poe at the start of this movie has no uh I don't know about care but no value for human life where it's, it's just he, like it's not that he doesn't have a value for human life here it's just he right, spur it's of the part moment of his, probably in the moment he's like we can take this yeah. ship that she's but even when, but even when, like, Leia points it out that we lost so many people doing this, and he's like, "Well, they died heroes," and it's like, I don't know, I find that super. I don't know, it just it doesn't strike me as a thing that I would think Poe would be like, but it's just how he is in this movie, I guess. For for it's his military arc, dude. yeah, he's very much more the cocky sky pilot that's just you know. Yeah. Thinks he's right. Uh, so the Resistance then gets its last freighter up and um, is ready to jump off the light speed. So Le- Leia does order Poe to come back, but he's too focused on taking down the Dreadnought and shuts off his communications um, as Leia's trying to talk him down from it. Poe then orders his squad Why wouldn't to they come all in. just leave without him? It's like you're disobeying well, like a direct order. Well, Everybody else well, turns around and comes back. There's him plus like eight of his ships or whatever it is. Yeah. Why didn't but all the others turn around? They got a direct order from the... There's from, also from a thing where you general. kind of... No, they don't... You know, you don't leave somebody behind. Even if they make a shit decision. Or you just you, tell everybody else to come back and he's like, well, there's, I can't do anything. It's one ship po, against the Dreadnought. Po wouldn't, but the thing is, Poe in that situation wouldn't be like that. Wouldn't I he think though? in that, in that situation, Poe comes off very and like, fuck it, I'll do it by myself then. I think he'd be smart enough to know when he doesn't stand a chance. He he thinks he does have a stand chance. That's why he's staying though. He's he's staying. Yeah, with the, all the bombers take- and everybody else around him. If all the other ships got turned back around, yeah, they don't get it because they don't have. They didn't hear. Like he turns off the communication from Leia and he orders them to come in. So Leia's only communicating with him. Yeah, this is a very poor system. I mean, Seems no, like because it. that's how it works. <laughs> that's how it works in most. There's commanders, and the commanders tell their troops what to do. These are opposed troops, mm, you yes. know? Like, there's... <laughs> not everyone has a fucking walkie-talkie <laughs> in, a, in a squadron, either. Um, yeah, so he, uh, he orders his squad of bombers to come in, and they're very exposed vehicles and easily taken down because they're carrying a shit ton of uh, bombs. So if anything touches them, they start blowing up, and we uh, the First Order starts taking them down with ease while the... Um, the resist uh, the first order starts t- firing up his lasers, the dreadnought's laser, to target the resistance ship that has uh, Leia ab- aboard it. The bombers all get taken down, but one with Paige Tico being the only person left alive on the last freighter. She manages to set off the bomb and then drop it onto the dreadnought, but she goes up in flames with it. I Can still I love say, this sequence. Yeah. These bombers are like the worst designed ships in the world. Like. They just, it was like dominoes where like one blew up and it took out the two next to it. It's like, fuck, <laughs> this is bad considering we're in space. Um, yeah, it's like, they, they, I guess, like they come in in a V shape, which I guess it makes sense. Like if all the gunners are protecting everyone around them and if they're close together, they take out the X-Wings before they get close. But then it all like falls like dominoes the second one of them get taken down because then they start like hitting into one another. So it's like, maybe you should have been a bit more spread out. I guess, I guess like <laughs> formation probably isn't the best decision. But yeah, it's like the, as soon as the debris starts hitting them and whatever else. Um, but yeah, no, I, I still love this sequence. Um, of course, another thing that people nitpick about this movie is the whole gravity thing. But um, I want to say here for like the 10th minute time, I think Star Wars is fantasy. It is not science fiction. I know everyone thinks these films are science fiction. They are not. They are fucking Narnia and Lord of the Rings fantasy. They are not Star Trek science fiction where everything tries to make substantial sense. Tr- sense. Makes sense. It is literally magic. It is literally people with magic wands and magic powers and mystical beings and all sorts of crazy stuff. These movies are fantasy. And also, within the Star Wars universe, they usually just explain how stuff works because they can make up any old reason and you're like, okay, cool, whatever. Is there gravity? Yes. They're so far above, they're so closely above the ships that they're within the ship's uh, 
shielding or whatever where the gravity gets taken away so they drop. That's how they explained it in the visual dictionary, basically. So it's like, there you go. Take that and run with it. Who cares? <laughs> you know, like well, it's either that, or they, they could like have like a thing that thing pulls, that pulls it down, down, pulls down all yeah. the bombs. I will, towards. I will laugh to say, a you know, why are they still using technology where they need to arm the bombs while like before they drop? Like, well, like that seems redundant a little bit. But then also, Did it only a took one of, get damaged or something, so they couldn't. No, they all had like yeah. a arming, so they all had to arm them prior to fail-safe. dropping, which is like okay. But also at the same time, like it only took one of them to blow up the dreadnought. Like it seemed like it didn't. I don't know. Like the proportion to explosive damaging power to the amount of ships they were trying to use to do it was. Very- I guess it's, it's strength in numbers. Of they don't need them all. They just need. They had so many to make sure that at least one succeeded. Yeah, exactly. But then at the same time, mm. it's like, okay, well, this is this is almost like you're going into a plan to be like, well, we know we're going to lose half of our bombers here. I don't know. It's just very, it's just very weird. Maybe they didn't, but also, I See, guess and that's know. what Leia knew and was like, probably pull out, and he wouldn't. Yeah. No, Leia is right. The whole thing of this, the whole thing of this scene is this scene is very important. It sets for, a theme for the. the it's movie. it's it literally sets up the entire movie, and everyone focuses on the whole fucking gravity thing of the movies because <laughs> this this theme greatly affects Poe. This scene great, greatly affects Leia's arc in this movie. This scene greatly affects Rose's arc in this movie, um, which then affects Poe, uh, um, Finn, Finn. Sorry, of course. Like literally, this scene is the movie kind of like this sets up the what. It, the ripple effects for the rest of the movie are based everything around what Poe does here. That That is what the movie is about. Um, yep. This movie's like two movies. It's very much like this. What happens here sets up one movie, which is all the resistance type stuff with Poe and everyone. And then there's another movie that's dealing with Ray and Luke and the Force, which is completely separate and only kind of ties back in in the last act. But up until that point, they're very separate entities that don't until, have anything to do with one another. Until the two storylines converge on Crate. There's yes. not, yeah. There's nothing really. exactly, yeah, yeah. Um. So then the bot, yeah. So bombers all got to, um, the resistance ship then gets uh, everyone back in or whoever's live. So Poe, uh, then everyone is celebrating, but Leia is the one who is looking over um the losses they've that they've taken for this quote unquote win. She's looking at a little screen where there's like crosses for all the ships that have been lost. And then we see that Finn wakes up in a medical bay and then Poe's landing his X-Wing inside the bay as they take off the hyperspeed. And then you just hear, <laughs> this part always makes me laugh because you just hear BB-8 like, bit, bit, bit. and then Poe's like, Finn, naked, leaking back. <laughs> He's like, have you sprung a- <laughs> something wrong with you, buddy? Like kind of thing. Then he he looks did over smash and he his it. head into that electrical well, grid. That's <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Uh, so Finn, uh, Poe then rushes over to Finn and then Finn's first words are, where's Ray? So then we cut back to the end of The Force Awakens and I always liked how this movie started with this escape sequence first. Like, it didn't straight away be like, you know what, fuck it, we're going to start. The, like, we're going to go get straight to the cliffhanger everyone wants from The Force Awakens. They're like, no, you can wait 15 t- minutes or so before you get to that. Um, so Ray is holding out the lightsaber to Luke. Luke grabs it, like looks it over. It. Chucks it. Why are you pointing out my spelling mistakes <laughs> on an audio podcast when no one would know? <laughs> one day we're going to do is, we're going to do a different we're going to do a different podcast series. One day it's called we're going to listen to our own stuff. We're going to critique podcast errors and mistakes. <laughs> Learn how to podcast with Explosion Network, and we'll note this moment as a negative. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Luke then chucks the lightsaber over his shoulder. He then retreats back to the village and locks himself inside his hut. Ray begins begging for his help, but he isn't replying. At 15 minutes, 36 seconds into the movie, we see our first Porg as Ray looks over the edge of the cliff to see Luke's X-Wing um, buried underwater down below and the Porgs are trying to kill themselves with the lightsaber. Well. Wow. They're not trying yep. to, but... You know, yeah. How happy are you that it's been confirmed that a Paul Gibb will be appearing in... What? Well, I want to say on this, if you want to go on this side note real quick, I can't remember what country's poster that was now, but it was an international poster of some sort. And they've got a Porg on it, and I'm like, okay, this does make me happy, but I'm still going to take it with a grain of salt that 
it's not just someone in the marketing department <laughs> over there is like, you know what? I like porgs. I'm going to add a porg to the poster. Let's go for gold. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. I want to take it and run with it, but I'm still just trying to be a little bit safe, not not, not get too hyped. I'm hoping there's porgs in it. There better be damn porgs in it. So Chewie bursts down the door uh, of Luke's little hut and then Luke begins screaming and, you know, embraces Chewie at first and then um, he ends up asking where's Han because Ray says, oh, we're here, we're on the Falcon, all these things. And then we cut to Snoke's throne room and we see Kylo enters <laughs> as Snoke basically makes fun of him for getting beat by Ray and then makes him take off his helmet. Um, he mocks him with all this stuff while, like, it's, when he takes off the helmet and says, oh, bested by a girl who, who had never held a lightsaber before. Alas, you're no Vader, just a child in a mask. And then tells him that you have too much of your father's heart in you, which pisses off Kylo, of course. Uh, on the elevator ride on the way down, Kylo then beats up his mask into a pulp in the elevator in a fit of anger, and we see wow. the mask destroyed. That, it, that doesn't look fixable. No. It really doesn't. No. Somehow. Some way. They, they just made a new one, or he's got spares. I mean, I always had questions about how he got his mask back after The Force Awakens anyway, because he literally drops it on the walkway thing when he kills Han, and then he races out to go after Rey, and then he fights her without the mask, and then the planet splits. So I presume he lost the ma the original mask there. So yes, the one he has in this movie, as far as I'm concerned, is a completely different mask to the no, one from the first movie. He force pulled it. As the their ship was leaving, he was like, I need my mask. <laughs> force pulled. <laughs> I don't know if he can <laughs> I mean Ashio mask. I was like, what is this? Harry Potter? Ashio Ashio mask. <laughs> Ashio mask. Ashio mask. <laughs> God damn it. Oh dear. Um, Can I say that corridor video even ruined this scene for me? Because I kept seeing the fucking guards around the edge of Snoke's room and I was like, fucking chumps. Not oh my even God. Can <laughs> you... <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm yeah, gonna, I'm around being guards. What's... I've got some interesting points when we get to that, when we do actually get to that scene. So, um, so we then get this whole conversation between Ray and Luke where Ray's basically like, Mr. Skywalker, we need you to come back. We need you to help the Kylo has risen up, Sith, blah, 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 or whatever she says. And you need to come back and defeat Kylo Ren because he's evil and he can't come back. And then Luke says, what I take as literally Luke kind of speaking to what the audience think is going to happen in this movie. And he says, you think what? I'm going to walk out with a laser sword and face the whole First Order? Which, even watching it now, I'm like, that is what everyone wanted from this movie. Everyone <laughs> wanted him to just walk out Luke to show up in this movie and kick everyone's ass and do that. And they make a point in the movie. He's like, that ain't how it works. You know, that's not what's going to happen. Spoilers. That's what happens. It's technically. It technically it does. Yeah. But technically also it doesn't. So <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> it does, but it doesn't. Uh, Luke <clears throat> then, uh, Luke then follows that up by saying, go away. And Ray says that she's not leaving without him. We now get this uh, whole scene of her following around as he does his daily routine. We get the infamous milk scene, of course, which everyone goes on about. I think that seems Whatever. great. You know, I liked that more this time around. I think the first couple of times I watched it, like, yes, ew. it was kind of jarring. Well, but I remember we talked time, about it the first time and you didn't like it, and I was like, yeah, but he's supposed to be weird. He's literally trying to make yeah, her leave no, the island. It was, <laughs> it was jarring and weird, and, and now watching it, I'm like, no, I like this. This is this is good. Like he's I, just yeah, I love it because he takes the swig. Weird. He takes the big swig and he's like smiles out like, mm, isn't this good? Don't you want to stay here on this island where <laughs> mm, I'm gonna drink this? You know, don't like, you that's, see this is what Jedi life leads you to. Yeah, it's you Jedi drink, life. Drink, take this. Uh, yes, I love it. Uh, as Luke is walking up a hill later in some fog, Ray stops as she starts hearing whispers. She follows them down to a destroyed tree and inside she finds several books. Right as she is about to touch the books, Luke enters and says, who are you? Um, he then enters the tree and shows her the books, explaining that they're the original Jedi texts. Luke then um, goes over and asks why Ray is the one here. She eventually breaks and says something inside of her has now awakened and uh, Luke says that she needs a teacher. Luke says he will not teach any more Jedi and that he came to his island to die before leaving her um, alone in the, the tree, the tree room. Can I say I we, love this scene? 
like you can say whatever you want. I mean, I, I, if I'm allowed to, <laughs> if I'm allowed to have my opinion on this podcast, <laughs> yeah, um, <that's> <laughs> it's it's almost like Luke hasn't properly looked at her or seen her until this moment in the movie. Like he hasn't properly stopped and been like, "Wait, who? Who like, exactly? Like that? Those three words of who are you? Like." It's a. It's a question that the audience has asked, and I can feel like there is a number of times throughout this movie where characters are used to ask very meta questions that the audience asks or that people ask in you know outside of yeah. the movie. Um, but it's done in such a way that it is coaxing out Ray's own ambitions and Ray's own desires or what she's going through, and I think that's done really well in this. Well, for the first part of this movie, Ray is kind of like what the audience was like going into the movie and then by the end she's accept- accepting of like the change and what's happening. But for the first half of the movie, she's like, no, Mr. Skywalker, we need the Jedi return. You need to come help us because that's what you've done. Your sister sent us. You need to come help Kylo Ren because Kylo Ren can't be stopped. You're the only one who's capable of doing it. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope, blah, 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 blah. And then, of course, by the time you get to the end of the movie, she's more like sort of accepting not ever like i'm not saying all the books leading into rise of skywalker teasing that she's obviously full of um mixed emotions and what she's going through but like by the time she reaches the end of this movie she's kind of more like accepting of her mission and that her sort of place i guess or knowing that she has a place in it because i, I feel like at the end of the force awakens she's like okay like i have this force thing i guess i'll figure that out but also my job at the moment is basically to be messenger girl and go get the the night to come save the day because I'm the only one that can do it because I've got the force. Woo, go me. Go team. Um, then we cut to Leia slapping Poe directly in the face and her saying, Poe, get out of your cockpit and demotes him uh, to captain. I think I should have wrote Correct. it down. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It out of all the notes I took, I forgot to write down the exact uh, thing. So, yeah, I, I, but I love how I just cut to this and it's like slap right in the face straight away. Uh, proximity alert then starts going off and the first order shows up Leia clicks onto the fact that they have been able to track them through hyperspace Poe asks for permission to do something reckless and he jumps directly into his X-Wing and some of uh, Kylo's and some TIE fighters head out of the Snoke's, I'll show them what Snoke's ship's called it's got an actual name but I can't remember Um, they head out of Snoke's ship to do their attack run Right as Leia can uh, sense the ships going past, she can uh, sense that Kylo is in his ship. And of course, you, the way they cut the scene, they Kylo can sense that his mother is down there. And r- right as he's seemingly about to, and this is obviously important for Kylo in the movie, is that right as he's got his fingers on and ready to fire at where he thinks his mother is, he does take the finger off and Leia is blasted off. Uh, into space because the other TIE fighters come in and do it. But it's obviously very important to note that Kylo isn't actually the one who... He's not responsible. He's not responsible. Yeah, he does He does actually take his finger off that. You know, able to kill his father, not able to kill his mother uh, here anyway. Does beg a lot of questions, especially if they're going to Rise of Skywalker. Like, <laughs> you got to remember that Leia's still there. It's like, no, they can't. they can't play around with that, can they? I don't know. Um, Maybe they shot an alternate ending where Kylo Ren came to the good side at the end of Force Awakens. You know? Oh, dear. I mean, maybe. <laughs> they, I they, mean, they ended it differently. Maybe, yeah. They shot an ending <laughs> where he comes home, everybody's happy, Han's alive. It was all a dream. <laughs> yeah. Um, they then, so Leia's blast off with the space with the rest of the crew, but she awakens mid space and is able to pull herself back inside the ship. Poe, Connix, and Finn watch from inside and collect her as she arrives safely okay. back inside. They then so, are we Leia to believe med- that maybe the shields are holding the wreckage inside the ship still or something? Uh, Otherwise, it's, she would have been is, left is, behind. The ship's going like. Really fast. Pretty fast. I I I tried to de- like defend this or like come up with reasons why this was okay when the movie came out. I I just can't now watching it. There's just like this this scene. Like I really didn't like the effects of her outside. I think the CG ness to her face was really bad. Like I don't I don't know. I just think the whole 
I don't know. The whole thing of uh, if somebody like could save her or something, I think it would have been better. Like I just don't. I like Leia having elements of the Force, but like just her flat out using the Force is really strange. I, I think the reason a lot of people Maybe struggle with it, it was is Kylo because you've never seen. It. No, I think the reason people struggle with it is because you've never seen Leia use the Force before. Whereas if you'd seen her use the Force before, maybe you'd. Pro- I feel like people might have been a bit more accepting. Because I feel like if Luke got blasted out of a thing and did this, people would have less problems, you know? Because they're like, oh, yeah, he's yeah. a Jedi. He's powerful. He can do it. But everyone's like, Leia isn't a Jedi. As far as we know, she's never been trained. But that's why I also think that we're... I also feel like we're going to get proof in The Rise of Skywalker that Luke trained her at some stage after Jedi. Like, did I'd some like to, sort of Jedi the thing training is, with her. Like, even if... For me, if even if it was something that she did subconsciously, like if she never opened up her eyes, but something about her body moved and she still did it, I think it would be easier for me to comprehend rather than her like opening her eyes and like being awake for that moment mm. and it being like a thing that she's under complete control of was just, yeah, I don't know. And also the the effect of her, like, just, I don't know why, like, the body position of her with her arm out, like, flying through space just looks not good. They did, um, so they've done something like this in Rebels, where Kanan got blasted out into space, and then he had to, not exactly the same, obviously, but he got, had to force pull himself in or whatever. And they did a sort of similar effect, but obviously it doesn't look quite as weird because it's animated where he's like starting to slowly freeze over. And then they did, um, I think it was in, because after every episode of Rebels on the YouTube channel, they'll do like an after show where they'll explain, like, you know, talk to some the writer directly like about sorts of things. And I think Dave Filoni in that was like, you know, everyone's going to ask questions about how he doesn't just die. And he's like, you know, like, Star Wars, fantasy, we can make up our own rules. Space Jedi is warmer are, in Star Wars. He's like, he's like, Jedi are strong, so, like, they're not going to freeze as fast as, like, a normal human would if they were blasted into space. And also there's, like, a force field around there kind of thing. He's like, so they, they're they freezing slower. Whatever. <laughs> you know? And th- they did that uh, before this. So it was, it was always, like, seemed like it was necessary. Like, them teasing, obviously, <laughs> the whole layer thing, I guess, by having another Jedi go for a similar... Uh, sort of thing yeah i i don't mind i agree on the i agree that the effect there's something off about it like just because they're trying to they're trying to show that she's slowly starting to freeze like that if she hangs out there longer that she will freeze like that that's what they're trying to show but there's just something that looks off about it i don't hate the way she comes back in because i honestly feel like however they did it it would kind of look just a bit weird like she either does it that way or she looks like fucking superman you know like (laughs) i i don't know how you do it where someone's not like that looks weird there's really not a good way to make someone look like they're flying um without a cape um because that's just how it's going to look because they're literally in space (laughs) you're going to be like they're either like supermaning it or they i don't know it's going to look weird no matter what yeah but the bare the basic thing of her knowing how to to tap into the force and do that in my mind i've always been like well like and i mean it's a life and death situation in life and death situations people do extraordinary things yeah you know you, you hear the story of women lifting up cars to save their cars babies to save their babies yeah. Kind of thing, yeah. Yeah. i i'd be interesting to think back if this played better like in the cinema because it was so recent to to carrie fisher's death it's like Oh my god, she's not dead! Like I remember, I, I basically skipped a beat when it happened in the cinema because I was like, like I my my brain was basically like, I can't believe they just did that because you see, obviously the explosion. Like yeah, you see the explosion happen. You see it get sucked out, and obviously your, your brain slows forward. Is like, well, they're dead, and I was I I was literally like, I can't believe, like, what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, what a way to make Leia go out. That sucks ass. And, yeah, then I, I think, obviously, the first time watching it, I definitely had no problems because when they cut to her doing it, I was just like, she's alive, yes. Like, I, I, I didn't care how it happened. I was just happy that it happened. <laughs> it didn't yeah. really matter to me. But, yeah, with every rewatch, I'm like, this is, like, weird force shit for a character that people didn't know was into, that was even force sensitive, I guess. But at the same time, you're like, Literally every fucking Skywalker is force sensitive, so why wouldn't Leia be? That's silly at this point to think that she wouldn't be. They're t- they're literally twins. They're twins. 
if, she, if anything, she's probably as strong as Luke if she trained, you know, or tried or got told. Luke didn't know how to use the force until literally Oberon was like, hey, your father's lightsaber. You know, until that point, what the fuck was he doing? So Leia could probably tap into it just the same. Shooting she got told. Brats at his T60. Um, so, Leia, yeah, blah, 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 blah. So, they put Leia in a med bed, and Finn picks up Ray's tracker device that Leia had on her hand and puts it onto his own. Back at Acto, Chewie is about to, <laughs> to, about to eat a porg when the porgs give him sad eyes, and he can't bring himself to do it. Still, Such one of shame. the. Still what is that? I wish it's beautiful. Looks like a tiny little delicious chicken. No, I wish horrible. he'd still taken a bite. Like still, no. like like made eye contact with the sad one and just slowly, like you know, reached in and had a bit of a nibble. No. At least the pork's death would have had purpose. No. Yeah. Then the pork died for no reason. You know what? Really, the pork's wanted a bite for themselves because pork's yeah. are cannibals. Yeah. Probably, I mean, porgs, no. you think you think the stupid pogs that smash themselves or accidentally impale themselves on different things—they not getting eaten by the other pogs. How rude! What other How food sources there on that planet? Are they all They're suckling herbivores. on that blue milk? Yes, <laughs> suckling on that <laughs> it's green milk. But yes, <laughs> green milk. I, I, I always find the same thing when they cut to that one sad one. It's just like the biggest like sad face, and it's like. I'm like, oh, this is funny. Also, going um, back to weird effects, the weird, the that sad one flying off when he gets scared, it just does. I don't know why. It just doesn't look like it moves enough. Like it just looks like somebody has like clicked on the 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 model and just dragged it upwards. It just looked weird. I mean, they're all they're weird. They're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Luke then sneaks onto the Falcon and he has a look around. Um, he's finds a dice and whatever else. And then eventually he sits down and R2 spots him who fires back up and greets him. And you get a whole reunion scene between the two of them. And R2 is obviously pleading his case for Luke to come back and save the day. And once again, I'd like to point out that R2 just swears a lot, but we just don't hear it because there's a point here where Luke's like, mind your language. (laughs) Doing all that thing. (laughs) So R2, again. One day, subtitles. Yeah. R2 is literally the most mouthy person in the Star Wars universe as far as I'm concerned. Um, R2 then trying to pull on the heart, heart springs of uh, Luke plays Obi-Wan's message, uh, which I always thought was a nice touch, obviously. Um, Luke then wakes up Ray and tells her that starting from dawn tomorrow, he'll teach her the ways of the Force with three lessons um, and why the Jedi must come to an end. So, I was, by the way, just to compare this to Empire, um, they make a it's easier to kind of track the time in this movie, I feel, even though like that they're in two different places. So this is one day that Ray's been free now. Like she arrives there. Let's say that she arrives there early morning and then she watches Luke go through his whole thing. She goes and does the whole tree stuff. It's now at nighttime. Luke snuck onto the Millennium Falcon, blah, blah, blah. Then he's like, okay, over the next three days. So she ends up being here for four days, basically. No. Three days, I think, because she, she doesn't even stay for the last day. So it's kind of easier to track her time here compared to <laughs> Luke's, however long Luke's with freaking Yoda and Empire that we talked about. Um, back on the ship, someone's name who I was trying to find out but couldn't, so I just wrote name here, explains that all the Resistance Command has been wiped out by Leia, uh, which I've, once again, everyone gets so antsy about the fact that General uh, Ak- Akbar doesn't get like a bigger hoorah in this movie. I'm like... Where, who the fuck's got time for an Akbar funeral when we didn't even get one for Han Solo? Like, <laughs> like also for the mainstream audience, who gives a the fuck, fuck about is Ad- Akbar? Ad- Ad- <laughs> who the fuck is some people? You'd go, oh, he's the guy from <clears throat> Return of the Jedi and stuff, and they'd be like, I mean, oh, he's still alive. Okay, you, yeah, is yeah, it confirmed sure. it was Ad- Admiral Akbar? It yeah. is Admiral Akbar. Yeah, she literally says is. Akbar in the movie as well. Yeah, well, it could have been his kid. Or no, Akbar could be a common name, like Smith. It is. No, it's it's confirmed. It was Akbar. He died, and he dies okay. here, and people get all fussy about it because he's a fucking meme from Jedi. That it's a trap. It's a trap. Wouldn't be as famous if it was, wasn't for. This trap was died, really. so good that he couldn't yell. It's a trap. That's that's yeah, how good that that's trap true. Was. Well, I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't a trap. Hmm? It was an attack. 
That's true. Um, so now the command falls down to Vice Admiral Holdo, who steps up to give a speech. She explains that there are only 400 of them left at this time, but, quote, they are the spark that will light the fire that will restore the public. Holdo points out that Poe got the whole bombing squad wiped out when he um, prompts to know what they're doing. She explains she's known ple- plenty trigger happy fly boys like him in his time, and he's the last of what they need right now. Can I say, her interaction here with Poe could have been a lot better to avoid things happening later. Like, she's very cold to Poe. It's not a very good managerial style. No, it's very, you know, you just got to be like, hey, like, I don't know. She's very, like, just kind of smacks Poe across his face with verbally and then. Also, he's, he's been demoted. He's not part of the leaders of, you know, like he's not the one who should be making decisions. She is like that. He doesn't have any right to really question her in the first place at all. Yeah, he does. Exactly but, true. But like, he's a still a like a big figure within the. He would be still. Like, he would be easily the best fighter pilot left after that attack. Like you would oh, want yeah, him sure. on. You would want him on your side, right? Like you wouldn't want to instantly make an enemy out of him. The moment, like when you're in this situation, I understand like stress and people aren't really thinking straight and whatever. But like, it's just like watching the scene back. I'm like, you know what? If she had just been a bit more like, straightforward what's she supposed with him, to say though? Because maybe at this point she doesn't actually know what she's doing, and he's like asking her like, "What are we doing? What's our plan?" And she's like, "How about?" You just go do you. I'm going to do mine. And you just l- let me think about it. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, he's like, what are we even, doing? She doesn't even say it like that, though. She, she's very much she said, like... You're a trigger-happy fire boy. I doesn't deserve to know just anything. Just go back to your go back to your post and I'll, like, you know, and I will speak to you if I need to you, pretty much. Like Maybe she's was, pissy because he got the whole fucking bombing squad killed. And she thought that was a bad move. He took out a dreadnought. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I just think there's a time and a place for this. It's a movie. It's it's what we're supposed to be interested in. You know, it may, it brings um, conflict more into this and, and, and carries on Poe's storyline. To but be fair, just, a lot of people were very happy about that dreadnought being destroyed. Yeah, that whole like bridge was, was celebrating. <laughs> so don't act like Poe was the only one happy that they're, they're not getting <laughs> taken down. For all we know, though, there's like a, like if you want to like input a deleted scene type thing, like that we don't see as an audience, there could be a scene between Poe landing and what if Rouse where Holdo and Leia talked and she she's like, he managed to take out the Dreadnought, but like look at our losses and, you know, like they, they could have had a talk and she's well aware of how much that upset Leia think, and maybe she's upset now. Like, didn't need it because those two seem to be on the right same wavelength from what you can tell from later in the film, so. Yeah. Well, they, um, the book, um, geez, I'm mental blanking on the book title. One of the books they released in the lead up to The Last Jedi where they introduced Holdo, like Holdo knew Leia from a very young age was how what their connection was. So I've known each other for ages and ages and ages. So, um, Finn is then trying to sneak out of one of the, through one of the escape pods when he spots Rose who then interrupts him. She says, you're Finn, the Finn, and calls him a resistance hero. She then explains that she's had to stun three people this this morning who were trying to run away. But then she clicks onto the fact that Finn was trying to do the exact same and she stuns him. Rose then explains how her sister just died protecting the fleet and Finn tries to explain how he wants to get the tracker away from the ship so Ray doesn't return to this mess. Rose starts clicking onto what's actually happening and how the lead ship must be the one that's tracking them. And from that, they're able to form a plan with Rose being able to disable the tracker and make a quick escape while it's disabled. They then pitch their plan to Poe, who is watching over Leia in her room. 3PO, 3PO explains that Holdo won't agree to this plan at all, so they're going to keep it need to know. They then dial up Maz Kanata. Because it kind of, she's struggling with here. And ask her for help, who is having a union dispute and she says there is a master code breaker she trusts to help who's at canto bite so can yep. i can i say this maz here 
doesn't line up with the Maz from Resistance Reborn? Uh, yes. I would agree. Like, doesn't line up with how she's like at the start of that book because she's very much like, fuck the Resistance, you fucked up my castle. Like, not that, but like she's kind of like, I'm I'm like out of this because of everything that's happened. Mm. Well, yes that's no. after this union dispute, so... Well, no. So, so in that book, which um, I think we can discuss, if as long as this doesn't take three hours to get to, at the end of this, we should discuss what that book goes on about. Because have you finished it yet? Uh, I'm like an hour left of it, but I okay, pretty so, much. But, yeah. well, next, but we can discuss without spoilers anyway. But uh, at the end of this, once we're done discussing the movie, we should definitely discuss that book a little bit because it literally takes place a minute after this movie finishes. It's literally like the the epilogue chapter to this movie, basically. But the Maz in that is Strap doesn't say... <laughs> the, the, uh, she, Maz doesn't say, fuck you, I'm not helping the Resistance in that. She says, fuck you, I'm not coming back to helping. She still offers... That's, yeah. She yeah. still offers Poe advice and tells him, like, hey, maybe this is a good idea, go do this, see this person, blah, 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 blah. They ask her to come back and be part of the new leadership of the Resistance and help Leia yeah, out, okay, to which she enough. says, no. I would think if they asked her something similar in this movie, she would say no. Uh, but here, go help the like. That's I feel fair. like even okay. if she wasn't in the middle of the union dispute and she could actually come be the code breaker, she'd be like, Meh, no, you can go get this guy from Canto Bite. You know, I, f- I feel like it lines fair. up that way. Fair enough. Um, and also all of this stuff with Rose, where um, obviously to tie it back in, where people like Rose has no character and no story in this. Her sister literally is the person. I don't, I don't know if people don't realise that. Like, I, I always wondered if people never realised because that her sister is literally the person at the start of the movie who dies strung the, the dreadnought. Like, they should have. It's They're both Asian. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking hell. I feel like I, I, Ash is allowed to make the joke, I yep. guess. Like, he's got, yep. gets the pass. Like... <laughs> 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 They're all just trying to be podcast, too, to make too dumb PC. You're like, <laughs> they can't be related. Uh, there's, there's definitely more than two <laughs> Asian people <laughs> unrelated to each other in this universe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. No, but she's, yeah, it's like. They say yeah, after just, Ray is every white person's daughter and. <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> this is true. This is also true. Um, but yeah, no, uh, Rose is the, that person's. Sister, in case you didn't know, and that's literally the whole thing with the Hazion's belt, Hazion's belt, which comes into it later. So uh, then, cut back, and Ray is waking up, and um, she's rubbing her eyes and doing her morning stretches as the next day starts. Uh, Kylo is chilling out, having his stitches removed, uh, and then they suddenly start. Sensing one another, I guess. Feeling, sensing one another around them. It, I always find it interesting because this movie so, does... I feel like it's a choice, obviously. And it works because they could have filmed and edited it differently and tried to do, like, CGI to, like, meld the scenes together so it looks more like they're in, like, a room that's, like, it stitches it together, you know, like some crazy green screen mm-hmm. stuff or whatever. But they made, uh, Ryan Johnson obviously made a choice of, like, no, like, we're, we're just going to film it and then... Like, we'll have the camera facing towards them every time we cut backwards and forwards and, you know, the audience is able to put it together. And I kind of like that choice more than going for some, like, mystically-looking yeah. shot where you can suddenly see the both of them together. Although, I will say, I 100% believe we're going to get more forced shit like this in The Rise of Skywalker, and I would say that JJ is not Ryan Johnson, and he will do that. He will do the crazy-looking special effect shot of, like, their rooms melding together and whatever else. But we'll see. Um, so, yeah, they, uh, Ray reaches, once they start being able to sense one uh, one another, Ray eventually reaches for her blaster and then shoots where she can sense that Kylo is or sees. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure at this stage if she can actually fully see him or unless that's later where they their connection gets stronger. Um, Kylo slides down the corridor, which is always one of the best gifs for this movie as well because he literally just, there's a gif you can just watch where he like, literally just slides across the uh, floor like he's fucking Tom Cruise from... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's McCall? What's the movie? Yeah. yeah. What uh, is that movie? Yeah, I don't know. Everyone everyone knows the movie, but no one knows the name of the it's movie. It's freaking well, uh, Thingy Maguire, right? It's yeah, 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 no, Jerry, Jerry Maguire. Jerry Maguire. No? no, it's not. Is it? Is what it? is it then? 
I'll need to look this up. Yeah, need to look this up. It's <laughs> a Tom Cruise. It's Star the one Wars everyone podcast. Knows. Star Wars podcast. We're talking about Tom Cruise, yeah. Anyway, everyone knows what we're talking about. Uh, Car- yeah, so Carlos slides down the corridor and then he begins explaining how he can only see her. Risky business. Her <laughs> Thank you, risky business. That is it. Yes. You're welcome, uh, risky business. <laughs> Luke, Luke then comes out of his uh, hut and um, then there's suddenly their connection is interrupted. Ray has also at this point pissed I off love, the caretakers. I, I just want to say I love the caretakers. Love the yeah. caretakers. Have you watched Need the deleted caretakers. scenes? <laughs> Go look up the no. deleted scenes because heaps of them in the deleted scenes. <laughs> they cut heaps <laughs> of so upset about scenes. everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, why wouldn't they be? Fucking Ray's here destroying their island. <laughs> you got this fucking person. Wookiee leaving hair everywhere. Like, can yeah. we try to clean Wookiee Kill hair? Like, leaving honestly. leaving un- uneaten pork meat on the ground. This is going to oh, bring predators. You know, <laughs> he had to de-feather those porgs. You know where the feathers get left? Everywhere. He turned them into a coat. Hopefully. <laughs> you waste not what's... Wow. Yeah. Wow, can't you want a your... porg coat? Corella de Ville of porgs over here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was, yeah, I was finding it funny how Luke comes out and he's like, what's with that? It's like points at the hole and then it cuts, the, like how we haven't seen the caretakers at all into this scene and they cut over to the hole and you got the caretakers and they're like, ah, this fucking bitch. Like, <laughs> <laughs> how dare she? Come in here, she's Just love how they're puppeteered. Shit. I assume they were puppeteered, like practically. Um, or were they I think they were people in costumes. Yeah. I think. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, I'd have to rewatch the thing. Um, then, yeah, once again, I kind of like this scene because Ray, as I was saying before, how like she has such, she changes by the time she reaches the end of this movie. Like when she walks up to Luke, like everything she says here just sounds like she's reading off a cue card. She's like, Master Skywalker, we need you to bring the Jedi back because Kylo Ren is strong in the dark side of the force. And she says all this as Luke leads him up them up to the Jedi mm-hmm. point of the island. And then Luke just calmly says, what do you know about the force? Um, it's a, and then she says, it's a power that Jedi have that let them control people and make things float, which I guess is like the very layman's explanation of what Jedi are as again, like not to be meta yep, about toddler. the movie, but yeah, <laughs> so, you know, like you ask someone on the street, like what's a Jedi? They'd be like, eh. like it's, a, it's a power that Jedi have, but it's like, it's not a power that Jedi have. Like that's the thing that the prequels, well, no, the original trilogy kind of explained it as well. It's like the force is literally in everyone and everything. That's the whole point. So it's not like a power. Really, it's not, it's not like uh, Harry Potter wizards, you know. Everyone has some force in them, I guess. It's the Matrix. You can tap into it. Some people can't tap into yeah. it. So. Yeah, it's, it's more equivalent to that than, yeah, like I'm the one Harry Potter strong wizard type thing happening. Uh, and, and then Luke's amazing line of amazing. Everything in that sentence was wrong. And then Luke, <laughs> Luke puts her on the rock and then tries to explain what the force is, saying that's, you know, energy, everything around us that binds us together. And then he tells her to <laughs> reach out with her feelings and she reaches out with her hands and then Luke begins tickling her end of her fingers. Do you feel that? Do you feel that? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and he like whacks her fingers. <laughs> Which I thought was quite, uh, so that was, that's a funny scene. He's like, that's... You know, <laughs> 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 it's funny though. What do you love it? I mean, Yoda uh, totally would have done that as well. So I mean, yeah, it makes yeah sense. it's it's very like Yoda esque. Yeah. Then um, he tells her to reach out for feelings this time, and then she closes her eyes and goes again, and she taps into the Force uh, and everything that's around the island. Um, Luke then begins explaining that the Force does not belong to the Jedi. To say that if the Jedi die, the Force dies is vanity. Ray then starts touching into the dark, uh, sensing the dark thing below them at the bottom of the island. Luke explains that powerful darkness uh, rises powerful light. She starts heading down into the darkness below and then the stone cracks and she's burst off to the side. Uh, Luke comments that she headed straight for it. She did not question it at all. She comments that she did not sense Luke around the island at all and that Luke is closed off from the force. Ray then says, I've seen this power only... No, oh, not Ray. Luke says, I've seen this power only once before in Ben Solo. It didn't scare me enough then, but it does now. So, I always found this... Uh, like uh, For that scene, you get uh, this is where they start building like your sense of what Luke is... Uh, what he's done and why he's done it. Like, what's going on? And they also like explain how the whole Luke cu- cutting himself off from the Force isn't like a... 
metaphorical term as in like, oh, he's cut himself off from the force as in he's not using the force like a power. It's more like he's literally cut himself off from the force to the point that Ray literally cannot even sense him and his presence on the island. She can sense everything else. They show everything, air, waves, water, the porgs, dead porgs, you know, everything that's going on. <laughs> Important she, to show the dead porgs. Yeah, how dare they? But she cannot sense Luke. And I always felt like that was important and something that a lot of people miss because I think that people still translate the whole cut himself off from the force as literally not choosing to use his powers as if that's a thing. But it's like, no, he's cut himself off from basically the life, the life force of everything. You know, like that's a choice, which is a lot different. Um, Connix then helps Finn and Rose sneak off the ship through an, and like, I don't know, it's not a escape ship, it's just like a mini craft, I guess. But um, And then she explains that they only have 18 hours of fuel left at this point. By the way, I would say, we get way more conics in this movie than Force Awakens, obviously. And we're gonna, I would presume we're going to get way more of her in Rise. Like, we've already seen her in a lot yeah. more in the trailer and these sorts of things. And also, I think it's just fitting to have her be in Rise a lot more, like, t- to kind of, of course, as Carrie's daughter. Like, it makes sense to have her... Yeah. Daughter have a bigger role in um, the movie, I guess. Who was well, obviously, this the her appearance in the Force Awakens was like her first ever acting role. Yeah. So for then, I think who was it? Time had a piece where she wrote a piece about her Carrie. history yeah. with Carrie Fisher, um, and after that, wanting to get into other acting jobs. So coming into the Last Jedi, she's a better actress than she was when she showed up in the Force Awakens. Way better. I watch Booksmart Love Week. Yes, <laughs> she's great awesome in, that. in that. Yes. So, <laughs> uh, yep. So watch after uh, because you don't have another episode of Star Wars to watch next week. Uh, watch Booksmart, and then mm. go uh, go watch <laughs> the Last Jedi after that. Yeah. The characters are very similar. <laughs> very very similar. Um, not they're not at all similar. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely feel like we'll see more of her in the next one. Um, yeah, because in the Force Awakens, I think she has like one line. Or something like that, but she's mostly in the background. Whereas in this movie, yeah. she's the first line of the movie, I think. Yeah. No, she is the first line. Like, literally, the movie opens with her telling that guy, like, that's the last ship. We're going to escape. Like, you know, whatever she's saying. Like, she literally starts the movie. So, she, she embodies the role of like the general members of the resistance. Like, she's like what the audience has to represent the rest of like the lower resistance that isn't part of like the high command or anything she she yeah. kind of represents it the normal person in the resistance yeah she's not like leading resistance member she's also not like your main cast that we have to care about like your Finn or your Ray or whoever she's like very much in the middle there and I guess that's will be important going to the next movie um so then Ray uh, after Finn and Rose sneak off the ship Ray we then cut back and she's standing at the Falcon when she reconnects with Kylo who just begins asking her why she thinks uh, they're connected. She begins calling him out names, but he asks if she's asked Luke about what happened the night he left, which she doesn't. I also find it, I always find it funny how just angry she gets straight away because he just turns around. And at this stage, he's not even trying to like chase after her because he's kind of just accepted this weird, like he can't do anything to it. He's like, I can't do it. Because obviously the first time it happens, he tries to like, you'll bring Luke Sky- Skywalker to me. It's like, that shit ain't working. So by now he's like, no, he's like, he's just curious that. more than anything else. Think. Yeah. He's like, as soon as he senses, he's like, why do you think this keeps happening? Whereas she's like, traitor, murderer, scum. I hate you. Like, <laughs> just like such a Yeah. Which I guess like kind of plays into rise of Skywalker. Where watch we've seen. She's kind of angsty and angry. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, like every, basically, so basically all shots we see of her <clears throat> fighting him. It seems like she's the one who's super angry. He's the one that looks super calm. Um, in, in fact, if, I mean, we'll talk a lot more about Rise of Skywalker next week again, but like you rewatch all those trailers and it's like, there's no Ben Solo, Kylo Ren angriness, whereas we got those in the first two trailers. Like all the angriness is coming from Ray, And even given like the Dark Ray stuff, obviously it's like a lot more playing with Ray's dark side. Um, and then they, they go off and of course they, they disappear again. Finn and Rose arrive at Canto Bite. They scope out the casino but can't find the code breaker inside. Outside they spot Favias, I think is how you say it. I was like, Favias, Favias, how do they say it? Um, they go out and look at them on the balcony. 
Finn says, come on, this place is beautiful. Why do you hate it so much? And then Finn, uh, Rose tells Finn to look closer at the city. He picks out the binoculars and he looks over the city and he gets to spot the darkness at the surface level below the glitz and glamour. Rose explains how her sister and her grew up on a similar planet that was taken over by the First Order and stripped there as they mined it. And the people that here are weapons dealers funding the war and selling it to the First Order and they're just profiting off everyone's pain. Um, it's a little bit I mean, uh, we get, anti-first class, you know? Yeah, very very much. <laughs> I was going to say, do you want to tackle the canto right now? Or do you want to wait until we get like to where D- DJ shows up? We I can mean, jump into yeah. it whenever you want to jump into it. <laughs> I, I was like, uh, Kieran's over here like, canto blight. Yeah, I'm good to wait until DJ's into it because I think I, the canto blight stuff kind of is better embodied later on in the movie. I yeah. think at this point in the movie, you're still like, okay, like, okay, yeah, we'll, where are we going? We'll, we'll wait until they make their escape and then we'll yeah. you can <clears throat> say your piece on it. Uh, so back with Ray, she's practicing lightsaber combat efficiently next to a stone as Luke watches on. Um, by the way, I, I will say, I don't want to like give away one of my predictions as long as it's not stolen before then by me giving it out now. But very much still feel like every time I see her using that staff, I'm like... She uses that double that double sided staff very good, doesn't she? And like they've had a tease the double sided dark saber, and it's, it's not gonna say you can't have a double sided light saber, that's for sure. You know, just saying. She seems to handle that quite well. Double sided light staff saber. Yeah, light start saber. The one side for knocking, one side for slaying. You know, yeah, girl. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> one side for knocking, one side for slaying. Can you get another t shirt? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she, Luke, uh, Luke gives his second lesson about how the Jedi are full of failure and hubris. He explains that he then explains that he took Ben and a dozen students after Leia asked him to train Luke. Uh, ben, sorry, and a dozen students and started the temple. And by the time he realized the darkness was growing inside Ben, it was too late. How he turned on him, and how he came to his uh, when he came to after Ben knocked him out his whole temple was ablaze and half his students were dead and missing he explains how Leia blamed Snoke but Luke knows it was his fault all along so this is obviously version one of the story we then get version two and we get version three um, of this event um, I still think that we're going to go back to this <laughs> in the Rise of Skywalker again and we're going to see more of it probably uh, more of what actually went down seeing as we're going to get the Knights of Ren so I mean yeah. you assume well, the- that's the students he recruited no. It's not? So we know, I can confirm no, because the, what's it, the Knights the of Ren Knights comic. Knights of Ren are like lots of robots, aren't they like robots, they're not actual. Like, no, they're people as far as we know. They're people? Like, okay. Uh, as far as we know. But there's a comic book coming out after Rise of Skywalker releases, like a week or so after, late December, um, a mini series called The Knights of Ren or something like that. But they've released the cover for it so far and like the brief like synopsis about what the first issue is about. And the first issue is about young Ben Solo and Luke Skywalker doing battle against the Knights of Ren. So Knights of Ren exist prior to Kylo forming them. Kylo does not form the Knights of Ren. He joins them and becomes their master. They're not something that he invented. And also if you look up the the cover for that comic book, um, there is the six that we know from like, that you can see in the Rise of Skywalker trailers and the promo pieces that are behind Kylo Ren, those six. Um, but in the comic book, there's those six plus another person with an actual red lightsaber. So at, at this time, when they're fighting them, they are led by someone else with a lightsaber, which presumably Kylo kills, I guess, and then takes over and becomes the leader of the Knights of Ren. So, yeah, the whole, like, for ages, ever since The Force Awakens, everyone's presumed, and I think rightfully so, because it made the most sense, that... Kylo stole half the students because Luke does say like he killed half the students and took off with the other half. Um, we always presume that the other half ended up becoming the Knights of Ren, but that's not what happened because they fight the Knights of Ren prior to um, the, this. Any well, of this going they down? They could replace the current Knights of Ren. True, I guess. Yeah, there could be like a bait and switch type thing. But yeah, that, when they released that comic cover, it was like, oh, uh, you've just kind of swung everything around like what we thought was going to be happening with the Knights of Ren completely. Um, so, yeah, he, uh, blah, 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 blame Snoke. The medical, back how to Leia. How was Snoke's fault? Do we know how it was Snoke's fault yet? Or is that no. something that's still not revealed? 
No. Still know nothing about Snoke. No. <clears throat> oh, Dead two know. years, no eulogy, no biography. No, yet. nothing. Yeah. No, I still wonder how much, like, how much they'll try and deal with Snoke. I feel like they'll try and deal with Snoke somewhat in the Rise of Skywalker. As a Skywalker, because as much as like I'm sure JJ's trying to make his own movie, I feel like they still kind of be like, okay, we'll try and band aid some things that people are still pissy about as quickly as we can. So if they can just have like a quick couple lines about like, I think they explain Snoke through the Emperor. If what we believe is the Emperor coming back in one of our. Yeah. I think the Emperor knows a lot more about Snoke and the Emperor will be what's used as exposition for that. Yeah, I, I definitely feel like it doesn't take much to exp- to quickly give the audience enough about Snoke. Just a, qu- a quick sentence or two. Yeah, Ray's going to turn up and, you know, Sidious is just going to be like, have you ever heard of the tale <laughs> of Darth Snokus the Dumb? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen. Never, never know. So then we cut back to Leia and the medical frigate uh, runs out of fuel and is destroyed. Connix gives an update of six hours of fuel remaining now at this point. Inside their cell, because Rose and Finn, I f- should have forgot, forgot to put that in as a note before, Rose and Finn get caught and chucked in because Wait, they landed their ship Do we ever find out beach. about the original Codebreaker? Do we ever find uh, any, if, any more information yes. about yes. What's the, they, what's, whatever his name was? Yeah, I, they released yeah, a short man. story. They released a short story book called uh, about Canto Bite, and there's some information about him and that. None of it that I've retained. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Helpful. <laughs> Should have uh, asked Jedi me Master, research yep. before the podcast. <laughs> it was it must have been really enthralling. We stuff. couldn't find we couldn't find space on the notes page to enter our stuff in. <sighs> That's true. You should just put it in a different color texture. You know. Uh, so, yeah, inside their cell, Rose and Finn are trying to figure out what their plan is and when they're talking amongst themselves, another person in the back of the cell uh, picks up his voice and says that they can crack the code. And they both are like, no, we we think we're good because the person is a bit weird. You know, he's muttering, he looks all a bit weird. He's, you know, they're like, no, I don't, don't really trust this guy. Don't, don't, don't think we trust him. Especially compared to the code breaker they saw upstairs with the... Red lapel or whatever it was. Um, he looks, you know, white suit, very shivelled looking dude with a mustache. This Secret dude is pl- claiming, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, very like James Bondy. Um, this dude who's saying he can be a code breaker more, looks uh, Jason the very Bush. opposite. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this person looks complete opposite to James Bond. There. Um, so then uh, they're like, he's like, okay, you know, whatever. And he walks over and manages to crack open the code and um, open the gate to the the prisoner is stuck in and he heads off in one direction and Finn and Rose head off in the other. And then he bumps into BB-8 who has taken down a bunch of the guards by shooting them with, I guess, coins, casino chips, coins. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. what, what are calling them? And then as another guard comes in, BB-8 just machine guns. Them on. Um, it's a TARDIS inside a BB okay, unit. Cool. Yeah, that, that makes sense. <laughs> it adds up. <laughs> it adds up. It makes sense. Rose and Thin uh, sneak down through a, I guess, sewage duck ladder thing. I'm not really sure what to call it. And they end up underground and find the uh, Favias that they saw before. And also the kids we saw before who were getting the shit kicked out of them or stunned by the person um, who was... They're, they're like little Oliver Twist kids, basically. Rose then shows the uh, resistance symbol to one of them and the kids back off calling for help as they're about to pull up or press the red button for help because I guess they think they're... Thebes or you know I don't know like at the time when they go to pull, pull the alarm you're like why are you calling for help like surely nothing could be worse but I guess they don't know something could be worse um, and then we cut to as the um, resistance oh, not resistance the troopers the guards yeah just as they 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 come in and they all take off aboard the five years in a herd and they go running down through the city up through buildings, tables, all sorts of things. And then they head towards the beach with security coming, chasing after them. Eventually blows up their ship. They end up running up the side of a mountain and eventually they get chucked off. And then at the edge of a cliff, they set the creature free. Um, well, Finn says, is it worth it though? And then to that, Rose get, let, sets the last creature free. And then she says, it was. Uh, right as they're about to be caught, it seems, DJ then shows up and picks them up on his, quote-unquote, his ship, I guess, and they take off. Do you want to tackle Canto Bite now? 
thoughts, Karen? It's like, the biggest, it's like the biggest waste of this movie is Canto Bite. Like, it's such a, like, there's no payoff to Canto Bite. Like, like, it's all for nothing. Which I guess. Sometimes it, you do thing things is, all for nothing. But the thing is, it doesn't even play into a storyline for Finn and Rose, really. It just plays back into Poe's storyline. It lets them bond with each other, which is more important. And then well, the I have. I now have. I, I'll leave my comments for Rose and um, Finn till we start talking about the book. But yeah, um, like I don't know. I just think it's just such a like. There's just no no successful payoff in this section of the movie because like it's all for nothing in the end. <laughs> well, I, I was going to say at, at this stage in the movie you think it's worth it because they've got the code breaker and they're about to go yep. save the day. So, yep. I guess like I I honestly still don't understand. I know everyone hates this scene and everyone's like, "Well, it could be shorter, it could be this." And I'm like, "Okay, I guess I'll, I'll listen to that criticism." But I'm like I mean, I it's kind of a very Star Wars moment when you think about it. It's like the Jabba's Palace, the the Maz Kanata's place. It's that kind of scene with a bunch of aliens but that you can see. Doesn't the it's just story- because all these money, all these aliens are rich and high class, and uh, people are upset at the the, the high class people. It's not their like- fault they were born into wealth. <laughs> 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 They're just trying to have a nice night at the casino, you know. <laughs> Place some bets on some racing. And then these people just come barging through. Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. I would um I would argue it's one of the most important scenes in the movie because it's it greatly affects Finn's outcome. It without this movie, you literally don't get the last scene of the movie. So by that account, it's very important. You know, like- I understand. I understand. Like, I, for me, the story about so on one hand, if they had more focused on this being planting the seeds of hope for the rebellion, like if they had focused on that somehow a little bit more than focusing on getting the codebreaker and the codebreaker storyline, I'd be so much more into Kanto Blight. Like, I'd be. A hundred percent more in because I really love the payoff of that last scene. Like I love that last scene, and I know a lot of people don't like it because they think it's dumb. But I really love that last scene. I just wish that this adventure through Canto Blight had done more to plant the seeds of the resistance rather than what it did. I need to pause you for one second. Blight is my last name. It's called Canto Blight. I meant (laughs) Blight. I mean bite every time and I say blight. No. He thinks Canto bite is terrible. He thinks blight is terrible. That's yeah. what blight is, is equally terrible. You know what? You know what we need to do? We need to add this to the episode that we go back and we do all of our mistakes in yeah, podcasting you know, just, and one. we just point this out. Yeah. I've heard yeah. you say it like Edited 10 times. Edit a bunch of like, sneezes. I, I can't <laughs> <laughs> Sneezing at dark things. <laughs> um, <sighs> I would I, so when it comes to like oh the whole maybe if they went there and their plan was to spark the resistance thing or, or or whatever. I think the point is like you can't go that way about it. It's just like you got to go with people. You got to go places and help people. And that's how they do it. And they 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 don't go here to help people, but they do make a choice at some point to help people. Like that's kind of what that end part is with like. Where Finn says it was all worth it though to, you know, like show up the streets and tear it all up or whatever, and then uh, Rose takes off the last harness from the the Favia and then kicks it off and says, "Now it was," as she sets the last one free. Like now, now it was worth it because we've saved all those those things. Did they you know? though? Set a bunch know? of wild animals, domesticated animals, off into the wild. Oh my Maybe god! Maybe they wild. They were raised in they, captivity. Now they're going to get eaten by some massive creature. And they just rode through the city causing destruction and damage. Who knows whose property and items were damaged? Was it just the rich people? It, How many no, poor people lost their items? It's going to be the moment? people who work in that city who are affected yeah. by the road 
damage. Like, I don't think nothing that they did did anything to, like, help the people that they want to help. Now all those I mean, little kids, they're out of jobs because there's no... They're work. out of jobs because they've, no, they've got no things to take care of anymore. I don't think they have jobs. They're in slavery. I think there's a big difference. Okay. They're, <laughs> they've got no reason to be enslaved now. They're, they're well, that'd be good. <laughs> they're just going to get sold to Jabba the Hutt. They're going to be sold to other slave masters. Spoilers, they're just going to have to sit point. through. They're going to have to go to Jabba's palace and sit through the performance every single day of the rest. Oh, that would be. <laughs> yeah, that's torturous. Yeah, that's, this is terrible. <laughs> but back to Ashley's point, they didn't do anything to really help the people of this of Kato. B- bite, bite is bite, <laughs> bite. Can't help everybody. No. Some people just don't need help, so you know they're all doing pretty that's, well. That's true. I, th- I think there's just a lot in Kanto Bite to digest. Like it's obviously trying to say something about the middle and upper class, lower class system. Definitely trying to say. I feel like it's trying to say something about like horse racing by account of the five years. I, I feel like that is definitely like horse racing is bad. Like I feel like there's a lot of subtext sort of stuff put in here, and like that you can break down and a little bit, but it's like a lot of it's little and small and not monumental. And I guess that's why it's not this big, big scene that everyone can walk away and go, well, that was fantastic. Cause it's like, well, it's like horse racing is bad. And like, look at these high class people profiting off war. Literally what happens in the real world. Like go watch fucking that Nicolas Cage movie, Lord of War or <laughs> whatever it's called. That's literally like about profiteering off war and like keeping war going to literally fund money. Um, you know, it's like then by the it's, it then by the end of the movie comes down to like sparking the res, the resistance among these kids and like believing in the force or whatever. Uh, they have a big part in that. It's a big part of Finn's story and the person he becomes at the end of the movie. So yeah, but it doesn't have like a big like they went here, they got item A, and then item A lets them do wazoo. It fails to have that, I guess, which is what audiences primarily want from movies, I guess. Anyway, we'll move on. We can come back to more of this when we talk about Finn later, I guess. Um, Luke, then we cut back to Luke and he's on the rock and he le- reaches out with the force for the first time. And Le- we then see Leia wakes up and she says, Luke, Luke. And she can sense him finally. Uh, then we go to Kylo and Ray, and she's connecting and uh, with him and asking why he hated uh, his father. He says that he, he didn't hate his father, but she begs, she then begs him saying, you had a father that loved you. Why would you do that? Blah, 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 blah. He then explains that her biggest weakness is that she's just looking for a father figure in so many people. First it was Han, now it's Luke. He explains his side of what happened that night, which is that Luke snuck him was, and was trying to kill him. Um, then says the big line that everyone loves, let the past die, kill it if you have to. It's the only way that you'll become what you're meant to be. Ray then heads down to the big darkness, sinkhole thing, whatever we describe it as. Uh, and she falls inside into it, into a pool of water. And then she drags herself out of that up into the, the land section cave, I guess is what we'll call it. And she finds a mirror. She touches it and then appears to enter an endless mirror world with an infinite amount of herself. And then we hear this voiceover come in. Which I, like, even watching it now, knowing that she's talking to Kylo, I always thought it was interesting. Like, the first time this scene started and there's, like, voiceover, I'm like, this feels weird because there's no no scene in Star Wars ever where you hear a character doing voiceover like this. You know what I mean? Like in the trailers, they make it sound like the characters are doing voiceover or whatever, but in the movies, you never get voiceover, mate. Yeah. This, this is what happens. It always feels weird. Um, she then, uh, she touches it and she hears this whole thing. She's talking to herself or whatever you think is happening. She says, I should have felt panicked, but I didn't. She then approaches the mirror and then she says... Let me see them again, my parents, please. And then the figure approaches after she manages to click, 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 click which is still such a cool scene. Like, uh, like visually, the it looks cool. Like this scene is visually very interesting and cool, um, special effects wise and whatever's going on here. Just hold it, click, 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 click. and sound wise also watching of good head, headphones on or whatever. It's like, click, click, click. Um, then she, when she finally makes her way to the mirror again, she touches it and asks to see her parents. So a figure approaches from inside the mirror and then the mirror cracks 
and it's just revealed to be herself again. And then we hear herself, we hear her say, I thought I'd find answers here. I was wrong. And then it's revealed that she's speaking to Kylo now inside her cabin with a fire and they're both kind of sitting there talking to one another, having smogs, I guess, or porks. Like. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> After I said it, I was like, wow, I missed a good pun. Um, <laughs> she then says, it isn't too late and reaches out with her hand to Kylo. He takes his glove off and reaches out. They connect fingertips yeah. and then Luke enters and sees them both and blasts everything to smithereens and Kylo disappears. Like a real dad. Like a real dad. Get out of the room. You should have had the door open three inches at all times, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking this door off. <laughs> I'm taking this door off, Ray. <laughs> Fucking Kylo, he's too old for you anyway. <laughs> um, I definitely always feel like and this one thing, I, I think all of this is obviously going to play a big part in Rise of Skywalker, like the connection and um, the Raylo stuff is heavy in this movie. This is where the Raylo stuff started, obviously, and it, it's hard to not say it's very evident when you've got scenes of them. Didn't it start fucking, a bit earlier when Ra- Kylo Ren had his shirt off? No, I mean, this movie is when the Raylo stuff started, not okay. like Force Awakens. Yep. Like, she looked like, at it and she just was like, damn. Damn. I yeah. could I could sleep on Do, part of that like a double bed. Do you have a <laughs> cow? <laughs> Maybe. Or, <laughs> that's yeah. fine if you don't. You can keep it off. <laughs> it's okay. You know, Vader had a cow. <laughs> 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 but you don't have to cough for him directly. It's okay. Yeah, but um, the hand thing, which I always feel is like a super important scene. And also like the whole force connection thing in this movie, every time I watch it, I'm like, this is such weird Star Wars shit. But they somehow like probably the weirdest Star Wars shit that we've seen in the main la- the mainline movies. I feel even like this is the weirdest Star Wars has got, and people don't complain about it. Like they just accept it. <laughs> they just ex- that, well, no, no, no one complains about Last Jedi at all. That's that's uh, that'd be silly. Why would anyone complain about this movie? But I think that's why because the going the going story is that George Lucas didn't like Force Awakens for a lot of reasons that people didn't, which is that it didn't try anything new. It was very like samey or whatever. Um, George Lucas apparently really likes this movie though. And I think that would make sense because his thing for Star Wars was that every time he did a new movie, he wanted new characters, new themes, new planets, like keep exploring the four. What's it mean? You know, like keep pushing forward, never, hmm. never slow down and whatever else. Um, so I, f- I feel like if anyone's going to like the whole force connection stuff and whatever else, it would definitely be him. And also at its heart, Star Wars, Star Wars has always been, like the mainline movies has always had love stories and romances in them mm-hmm. um, in some form of fashion. So also the whole Raylo thing between the two of them makes a lot of sense thematically for like what Star Wars has always been about. Um, yeah, so Luke comes in, takes the door off, gets the screwdriver out, does what he needs to do. Uh, <laughs> Ray then rushes over to him and says, is it true? Did you try and murder him? And then she starts beefing with Luke to get into a bit of a fight. She pushes him over, eventually uh, force pulling over the lightsaber and lighting it up, which I always found interesting. Like, I think I didn't click onto this until like the second or third time I watched it, but it's like very much like, I'd like to think in Luke's mind, he's thinking about what he did to Ben at this stage, I guess, because she literally lights up the saber and he just kind of is on the ground. You know, he's on, he's the one on the ground. Like, mm-hmm. don't, Hurt me, even though we know he. Can, right, well, yeah, th- that's also very important. The fact that he he's could, using the force again. He's using the force again, and he could probably fly himself out, knock her out. You know, like, but he doesn't. He, he like hovers himself there. He, he, he yeah, <laughs> he hovers himself <laughs> there for a second, and then like lets himself down gently. And he, he's in the position because he needs to be in that position, not because she's the one standing over him. I feel. Um, he then explains. Uh, Luke then says that. He looked into Kylo's mind that night um, after he sensed the darkness and inside his mind he saw how fucked up it was, I guess. It's the easiest way to explain it. And then he explains that for a split second he lit up his saber in a moment of weakness and that Ben's last image, uh, what he saw when he woke up was Luke lighting up his saber for a second and then Luke's last image is that of a sad boy looking at his master who has betrayed him. So it's... uh, this movie does a good job of being like, his story A, his story B, his story C, which makes sense of the pers- perspective of both people. You know, could have like, just lied. Well, could have. Just getting a fly. 
<sighs> I mean, it's these bugs in this this planet are really bad. I'm sorry, there's yeah, lots of. I'm waking you up to take you on a field trip. Come on. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't yeah. say anything. I suppose it's only a split second, and they pull shit down on him. Um, Ray explains how she had a vision that Kylo would turn if she went for him, and then she gets in the Falcon and leaves. Luke then heads to the tree and spots Yoda, <laughs> who's like, ah, ha, ha. Luke then explains that he's going to burn the tree. The text is going to end it all. Yoda just watches, but Luke, as he approaches the tree, can't r- bring himself to actually do it. So Yoda causes a giant lightning strike and laughs manically as the tree burns, and saying, oh, Skywalker, missed you, I have. Um, then they Luke reaches back, lays on a log with him, watching the fire all burn out. And then Yoda says, the greatest teacher failure is... And then Luke ex- uh, then explains to Luke that he may have lost Kylo, but they have he has not re- lost Ray. The two of them then sit and watch the tree burn. Tell you I what, love how- there's no point to this scene, seeing as the books are in the the Millennium Falcon <laughs> later. Yeah, which by the way is it's always, pointless. It's so, they don't actually make a big thing about that. Like the only the only way you, you know that is if you spot it yourself or someone like points it out to you, obviously. Yeah. But then they don't have a big like scene of like Ray being like, "Here, I've got the books," and like put them over there. It's like it's that split out of frame as they open up the the drawer to get the blanket out for Rose. Yeah, yeah the blanket Rose, out yeah. for Rose, and the the books are in there at the end. So it's like it's always so subtle. I still wonder if that's going to come back and be important into the next movie, or if um, it's just a bit of a nod to. No, she just likes hoarding. Yeah. Well, it's like a lot of the ways Ray, the movie's about Ray accepting, I guess, like what he's saying and agreeing that some of it's true, but at the same time being like, well, that doesn't mean you literally have to destroy everything. And also I like to believe that Yoda at the end here knows that the books aren't in there, but he just starts the fire and burns it anyway, just for the sake of Luke. Like, you know. He's doing it to free Luke's mind and to kind of, I guess Luke, ever since he has been the last, you know, the last Jedi, he has always bore the weight of the Jedi Order on his shoulders. Like everything's been on Luke to to rebuild or to be the future of the Jedi. And I think just that one moment takes that pressure off Luke's shoulders. And God, this, A, this scene I remember in cinemas, it like made me so excited and just even watching it, again now still makes me really excited and i think it just it shows you just the genius of yoda and how like he he had his flaws and he has a lot of his problems and you know like original trilogy yoda was crazy as shit and was almost as bad as jar jar as we've already discussed but his teaching is still there and he still has a purpose for everything he does and he isn't stuck anymore in the old ways. Hmm. Definitely yeah. feels like in his time, years meditating <laughs> endlessly in the force, he's come to possibly accept the the bad decisions he made that led to the uh, the, the Clone Wars and whatever. <laughs> Probably don't build the Je- like. Should have sensed that the Jedi Temple was <laughs> there was a fucking Sith leader. Oh, top like of a Sith leader. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have picked up on that. I don't know. Um, all these other silly things, yeah. Um, also, like, I, I like how they they do like a good balance here of Yoda isn't quite as crazy as like we see him in Empire, but he he's was, still like yeah. crazy. Like, but it's, it's not prequel, that, but it's not crazy crazy. And like, I can see elements of that craziness from Yoda in Luke in this movie. Like, there's that that side to him that he's almost solitude unhinged. will do that to you. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Like it's just, and I and I I like that. It, it's always a thing where it's a throwback to his previous teacher and, and him seeing what the Jedi Order has become. It's always and it's also Luke's story here is very similar to that of Yoda's, and in some ways Obi Wan's, I guess, in that Yoda literally fights um, Emperor Palpatine, fails, and then because he fails, he sends himself into hiding. Luke fails Ben, and then because of that one failure. It's like fuck this shit and sends himself into to hiding. The lesson for both Everyone of them really failed is that, Anakin and then he went into hiding. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the the lesson is that maybe Jedi's need to learn that just because they fuck up once, they don't need to suddenly <laughs> go hide themselves on the islands and wherever else. And you know, Boys Dahlia and is listening. the greatest teacher. 
Yes. But Boys and girls learned, listening to this podcast, if you fail at something, send yourself to exile. Find yourself <laughs> an island. Find yourself a fucking a desolate planet. I'm sure there's some nice you, spots in uh, Northern Territory. And you, you hunker down by yourself. So you start going until, crazy. Until somebody comes along for you to train in whatever craft, hobby, or specialization that you may have. <laughs> so you're a master. <laughs> It's always it's also quite funny the whole like Luke thing. I need you to teach me the other ways of accounting. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I just found and it then quite- prepared because your death will be at the end of that teaching. Wow. You will probably fade into nothingness and return as a ghost. Wow, what a life! That's how ghosts it- happen. I find it <laughs> quite funny that everyone, because of course everyone, you know, we t- I talked about how it was actually JJ the one that put. Luke and stranding them on the island and Ryan Johnson just kind of tackles what he's given with. But like within Star Wars, Jedi literally stranding themselves in lone planets by themselves is literally what we're set up with up to this point. So that was the other thing that, yeah. And literally none of them come out of retirement to save the day of them. And Obi-Wan, you could, you could be like, yeah, but Obi-Wan left and he did this. Yeah. He like literally stands there and lets himself get killed. (laughs) Killed though, like, <laughs> yeah. like none of the Jedi that we have seen go into hiding, Obi Wan and Yoda have come out and magically saved the day. Yet that's what everyone wanted from Luke for some reason. Even um, I can't remember his full name from Jedi Fallen Order. Um, Con- Cordova, 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 yes, Cordova. Yeah, that's it. He went and pieced out, and he just you know was kind of pointless. Um, like Spoilers. it's just a Jedi thing, just to exile yourself. Uh, well, yeah, it's apparently what you do. You fail once, you move on. Um, yeah, no. The, I mean, the the lesson the lesson here with the Jedi is just literally like one of the most simplest like lessons you get taught as a child, which is that like, you know, failure is a tool. You know, you you fa- it's good to fail at things because then you can learn from them and get better and whatever better. else. But yeah. yeah. So we then come back to DJ and he's asking for payment for helping. He's asking for upfront payment to do the, the whole hacking job, slicing job. And then he asked for Rose's hazy on belt uh, medallion, which is one that he, he had, she has split with her sister. So it's got sentimental value to her, of course. Uh, she gives it to him as down payment though. He then retreats into the back of the ship that he stole and then Finn follows him back there and he's asking for him to give back the necklace because he's so important to to rose and then dj points out that the ship he stole was owned by someone who made weapons for both sides in the war because finn's saying you know like fight for the good guys don't fight for the bad guys and dj's like well who are the good guys and bad guys because this person literally is funding both sides so like who's to say (laughs) who who is who yeah this and i kind of like this because i I feel like this movie does could just be a historian ship you know Hey, they just keep it. They it's just a historian wants to find out about the different. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm sure things. that's exactly what's sure that's exactly what happened. <laughs> this movie different is, schematics. They explore in expanded universe material, even like Star Wars. It, Star Wars Resistance, an animated TV show, the the kids one, the very kiddie one that everyone makes fun of. That show does a very good job of exploring like the morality of the Resistance and f- First Order type side of thing. Um, even the uh, new book does like a pretty good job of explain them like morality a little bit but this is the only movie i feel that does a good job of explaining the like gray area and like not being like everything's as simple as black white like it's a it's a very it's like we say that rogue one is a war movie in star wars i think this is the mainstream movie that brings the most elements of realistic war and like um a true recognition of it into the mainstream franchise uh, yes, I would say so. Because all the other movies are just like fighting good guys, bad guys. It's like it's like just even, like they're bad, they're good. Even the opening scene of such destruction and desolation for the like for the rebels and everything was just like I don't think in any of the other Star Wars movies, not even in either of the Death Star battles. Have we seen a fight where it's like, yeah, you won, but you gave yeah. up so much to win? Yeah. All the X-Wings that get blown up in the original trilogy is very much like, oh, they, they die. But you never see anyone afterwards be like, 
oh man, like, but we lost like 20 X Wings for that. Like, you know, yeah. like, the, there's never ever any repercussion scene for anything. Yeah. So then we cut to, uh, after all this, we, Finn and Rose are just arriving or about to arrive back at uh, where everyone's doing their escape run and Huck's uh, freaking, what's the face, Snoke's ship. And Poe is filling them in with a bit of information and saying how their their uh, Holdo, she's meant to got names now. Holdo is about to do a bit of a escape run with everyone, and that's important, obviously, because this is where DJ gets the information for 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 later. Uh, they then ask Poe to give them a bit more time, so he's like, "Okay, I'll see what I do." Ray is also arriving at this point, well, seemingly at the same point uh, above with the Falcon, and she jumps into a escape pod and is blasted off out of that as the fa- Falcon takes off into hyperspace again. I, I guess that hi- the Falcon just hyperspace is like further away and then like watches from a distance where they can't be tracked or something, I guess, you know, like, cause it zips out and then obviously it comes in later. So like it, she must've told like, come save me later or whatever. I don't know. It was not really important, but um, Ray, Ray is then gently, gently just, flown in to the ship and she's greeted by Kylo and some troopers and they cuff her. Poe then goes down and he tries to explain the plan to Holdo and says, you know, like Finn and Rose are sneaking aboard the ship. They're going to deactivate the thing and then we'll be able to get out of here, blah, 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 blah. Holdo is like, you're putting the fate of literally everyone on this ship in the hands of an ex, <laughs> an ex stormtrooper and like some random the uh, engineer or whatever the official title is. And she's like, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. And then uh, she still continues trying to put everyone into escape mode. Uh, aboard Snoke's ship, Finn and Rose and DJ are sneaking into their location. Ray is heading up to see Snoke. And then aboard the elevator, she explains to Kylo that he will not bow before Snoke. He explains that he has seen a vision as well. And that when the moment comes, she will stand with him and that she, uh, he has seen her parents. Um, Ho- Poe then tries to hold... Oh, mental playing on the word, mutiny. Poe does a mutiny, and he charges up to uh, take control of the ship, and he leaps some people down watching over Holdo. Then Holdo kicks over a bunch of, I don't know, a pole or so- <laughs> something, causes a bunch of smoke <laughs> to go off, and then you get the amazing scene of uh, her blasting through the, the smoke and firing her blaster, but in the film, you can clearly see that uh, as she's doing it, she's going pew, pew, pew. <laughs> well, yeah. if, if you watch it, like, <laughs> she's <Yep>. pew. <laughs> pew. It's quite funny. Once you've had it pointed out, you cannot watch that scene when she just comes out of the smoke. She's like, pew. <laughs> it's like uh, Will McGregor, whoever kept being like with the lightsabers or whatever, you know, like the. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Everyone making Star Wars movies just <laughs> adds all their own noises in while they're doing it, apparently. Uh, so up uh, after doing all this, Holdo then starts making his way upstairs. Obviously, Poe po closes down the door to the bridge as he's trying to make his final stand. Um, then we cut back to the security room where DJ has used the Hathion's belt to crack open the door and they're about to enter the security room and shut everything off and save the day and Canto Bite was worth it because they needed it to get DJ to get in here and it's all going to make sense. But no, of course, when they enter the room, they're caught by Phasma and a whole bunch of other stormtroopers and they're taken captive. Uh, we cut back to the resistance ship and the door is burst open. Um, we presume it's going to be Holdo, of course, when you're watching it, but it's not. It's Leia. She's burst open the room. By the way, who's to say she didn't force that door open? You know, it's, it's like, it's fucking hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe she's been know. using force powers this entire time. Entire time, but everyone's like, oh, she There's blasted the, None that. of the doors on the, the ship work. She's just yeah. been using the force powers. Damn right. Just just putting it out there. Uh, and then when she blasts open the room, the room I like how Poe's like, Leia, and then Leia just doesn't even think about it for a second. She just she stuns Poe straight away. Uh, we then Have we seen back. that weapon before? Because I don't think we've ever seen like stun a stun. Stun blasters? Yeah. That's like OG Star Wars. Like set your weapons to stun, you know, type. That's, no, that, like that's the wide Trek. range, it seemed. The wide area of effect it looked like it had. Uh, I don't know if we've... No, that's just set phases to stun Star Trek. Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> no, they definitely say stun in some of the Star Wars. I'd- yeah, they say stun as well, but set phases to stun is Star Trek as a. I think it's like in the scene where they're breaking in to get Leia. They said set to, to stun. Yeah, they they but yeah. yeah. We do know but weapons. Stun they didn't look like this. 
No, no. Where he knocks him off his feet. Yeah. No, it's a shotgun version of a stun. <laughs> I guess. I don't yeah. know. It's like good. Why isn't this? Why why aren't stormtroopers in this version? I don't know. Probably help. Less chance of missing. <laughs> Potentially. Um, then we cut to... I guess to, they knock each other out. Probably. We then cut to Holdo and Leia. They're getting all the escape pods to fill up again. And then Holdo's saying, that's one troublemaker. I like him. And then we're seeing that Poe is being loaded onto a transport as well. Leia then says, goodbye to Holdo. As she explains, someone needs to stay behind and pilot the ship as the rest of them all make their escape. Um, they activate a cloaking device, a small one over all the little escape ships, and they attempt to make their escape slowly to the planet crate below, which is the big plan that Holdo's been working on this entire time. And as much as Poe thought that Holdo was just trying to send all these escape pods to their utter doom to be shot and destroyed, um, she had this plan that was going to work. And they probably could have got Why it done Why didn't faster. she tell him the plan? Exactly. Why didn't she That's just what say, the hey, internet bro, says. Here's, here's, here's the plan, bro. Especially when. To, but well, especially he when he jumps to the conclusions that they're just sending him off to die. It's like. Here, no, I don't, this I don't think thinking. this is a hot take. I, I generally think this is exactly what happened. If this was a proper army movie, right? Or if you tr- transfer everything to proper army terms, and then you had Holdo's character be your typical American army yeah. movie person, general, being all like, rrr, 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 all that sort of stuff. And I guarantee if that's what it was, and you had Poe coming up doing what he does in this movie, guarantee no one would be saying shit because they would be suddenly like, no, they, they shouldn't have been questioning the general. Poe shouldn't have been questioning yeah. the general. But it's because the general in this like case, Poe. or the. Re- the replacement for the general in this movie is a purple haired woman that everyone suddenly gets all up in arms and they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. She should have just whoa. told him. <laughs> I mean, if it was a man, <laughs> we'd still be saying, why didn't you tell him? Tell Poe. Poe's awesome. I feel like no, it's because we from, like. Po- from, I feel uh, like it's because we're excited with Poe to start off with. That's and why. from, like, uh, like, it's because from the audience perspective, Poe is a major part of the resistance. Like, Poe is a key figure in the resistance. So that would leave you to believe that you would want him on your side when want to, trying to plan something like this. Like, I don't, I don't like you, you have a point. I don't agree with it totally in terms of this is exactly what's happening, but like, I just think that if she had just been a little bit more forthcoming with him and just been like, Hey, fuck it. Just calm your farm. This is what's going on. Help me get it done. I guess the the other point, though, is like, even if she told him, I don't believe that he wouldn't have still just been reckless and done what he'd done. I I, I, I feel like the point is, I feel like the major point isn't so much that he failed to follow orders and that she should have told him and then suddenly Poe would have been like, oh, that all makes sense. It's fine. Like, I I feel like the the bigger point is that Poe is so reckless and unwilling to trust leadership above himself and he thinks he's... so right in what he does that even if she was like i'm doing this this and this he would have been like okay um but my plan's better so we're doing that and he probably still would have done this exact same thing i believe he would have still done the exact same thing. should have chucked him in the brig uh yes she should have (laughs) like i i think that makes depending on what you believe there can affect i guess the movie because i believe that he would have just done the exact same shit even if she told him I don't. I don't think the the post storyline lies on her telling him or not. Because yeah, I, I think the bigger point is he still would have done it. She's like, oh, I'm gonna do all this escape pods. He's like, okay, well, I'm smarter than you because I'm Poe Dameron. The, the whole movie, in a lot of ways, this movie is a lot about Poe. Like it is nearly Poe's movie next to Ray's. It's like Ray and then Poe, I guess. Like in character story arcs. In what's happening. Mm-hmm. So then we cut to back to the ship and Snoke removes Ray's handcuffs and draws her closer using the force. Snoke all shocked when he tells uh, Ray starts threatening Snoke and being like, you know, you're he's gonna turn on you, you have gonna control over him. And Snoke's like, Oh, have you sensed a weakness in my apprentice? And then he just starts chuckling and explains how he was actually the one that made the connection between them, which is always like a big important part of the movie. And if anything I'd want explained in like future material, I don't really care too much about Ahsoka as a character. It's like, whatever, but 
Like the fact he was able to use his force powers to connect, apparently connect to other people is seemingly very important. And that's like the one thing I would like a bit more information on. Like how does that but, happen? I mean, he, don't, he, he can't in any way manipulate the information they get from each other from that connection. So yeah. I mean, why well, that's, is he that's acting a, so smug? <laughs> well, yeah, I guess. Uh, well, maybe, he, but the other thing is like, maybe he's just saying it. Maybe he's lying. Maybe he thinks he did it, but he wasn't actually the one who did it. Maybe he was trying to create the connection, but the connection just happened naturally, and he thinks he caused it. You know what I mean? Like we, we, we don't really... Know what I mean? Know what I mean over here? Um, so then we cut back to DJ, and as Finn and Rose are a bunch uh, stuck in front of a bunch of Stormtroopers and Captain Phasma and Hux, and Hux, Hux has all been very hammy as he is in this movie. I mean, he was hammy in the first movie. The first order! But here he's all very Ooh. hammy and used for jokes, more or less. Um, so then DJ is being rewarded because he's handed over the information that he overheard from uh, Poe giving... Once again, this is Poe's fault. Like everything in this movie, it's Poe's fault because mm-hmm. it, it all comes back. Like you could be like, oh, you know, like Poe didn't cause that big of a deal. Like sure, he, like he slowed down the escape for a couple of minutes, blah, 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 blah. He did, he not only slowed down the escape, he literally causes their ships to be shot up because well, he's the one. When you think about it, he, he, he cut down the amount of dreadnoughts chasing him by one. Yeah. So yeah, by, by one. That's, yeah. that's, do that's the math the, on that one. Imagine if, if there was a dreadnought, during, they wouldn't have even been able to, you know, they probably would have wouldn't have got this far. Definitely. I, f- I feel like it made the major difference. <laughs> it would have, like, the enemy's like, damn, if we had that fucking dreadnought, we would be destroying the resistance right here, right now. I mean, they could have had all these bombers that they were laying bombs behind them for the entire time, potentially. Was this Mario Kart? Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Them bananas, one thing. That's how yeah, the space like, thing works, right? <laughs> if if Poe hadn't sent them on the mission, and then he DJ wouldn't have been able to overhear the thing, and then DJ wouldn't have been able to give it out the information later. It all comes back to Poe. Um. So then DJ is yeah, re- rewarded, and he simply like Finn starts berating him a bit and be like, you know, why would you do that, traitor? Blah 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 blah. DJ says, we got caught. I made a deal, and shrugs, and then Husk uh, orders that both Finn and Rose be killed. We cut back to Snoke, who's playing with Ray a bit and trying to suck old information out of her, which he seemingly does. Like, I guess, like kind of like Kylo does to Poe in the first one. You, we see a shot of her before screaming and whatever in the air as Snoke says he's going to get information out of her. And then we cut back to this. He says he's got the location of Skywalker and his island and whatever, blah, 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 blah. And then uh, he orders Snoke, uh, Snoke orders Ren to kill Ray. And saying, complete your training and fulfill your your destiny. And then Ben replies, I know what I have to do. Of course, like ringing back to Force Awakens and the Han Solo scene once again. Snoke explains how he can see Kylo's every move. He's like, I can sense you turning the lightsaber to strike through at your foe. But Kylo has actually turned Ray's lightsaber and ignited it to kill Snoke. The two then Such turn back... Moment. Yeah, the two then turn back to back and begin fighting out against Snoke's royal guards. The fight ends with Ray doing a sweet drop, the saber move, and slaying her final foe, uh, foe before she then f- throws it over to Ben, who uses it as a fucking gun, more or less, to destroy the final knight who was saving him. So, do you want to have your big. Uh, Kreider, Kreider crew destroyed this whole fight scene moment or uh, I think it's still good Ash, Ash. I think it's still good you know after that initial shot I think it's fine no there's some that bad. and the fact that I haven't seen this it, I didn't see the video in like four months or something so like Kreider there's like the sections where like the guy stands back up and then it clearly isn't his time in the choreography. So he kind of just like flails his weapon for no reason or like, no, he falls Momentum. over for no reason. No, he falls over for no reason. Like, slipped after, on a, like, missing slipped on a bit of, or whatever. S- slipped I just on think a bit of water. just choreography in this that just like, once you notice it, it kind of ruins the fight a little bit. I will say, in case anyone doesn't know, the, the Karate crew did a video... They do these like stuntmen. Cor- Corridor. Stuntmen. Yeah. 
yeah, Corridor Crew. They did like a stuntman reacts video where they pointed out that the choreography for the fight here isn't too good. And I too watched that video and I was like, damn, they've ruined this scene. I'm not looking forward to watching it anymore because they've ruined it for me. They've shown me how bad it is. And watching their video, I'm like, yeah, the choreography here is bad. Watching the movie... I have no problem with it. And I think the reason I have no problem with it compared to when they slow it down and show you why it's bad is because of that. They slow it down and show you why it's bad. Um, yeah. When you're watching the actual scene in the movie, it's so fast that even though I know where to look for the weird decisions of people like staying back and unrealistically not coming in and the timing's all sort of weird. So the timing is done for the shot to make Kylo... And Ray look cool. It's not done to look realistic of what all these people coming in to kill them. But because it's so fast and then you cut to the next scene, I have absolutely no problem. I really thought I was going to watch this and be like, oh, damn, they ruined this fight for me. Damn, that sucks, but whatever. But I, it's just one of those things where unless you slow it down and you're looking for it, it does not matter. I just, I, I just don't think the fight is as epic for me anymore as it was when I f- the first few times I watched it. Because I remember the first few times I watched this fight scene and I thought this fight scene was fucking amazing. See, I've, like, I've never thought the fight was amazing, especially compared to other Star Wars fights. I just think it's the emotional impact of the scene. Yeah. Like, I'm just, I just think the fight's like really good. And I just think there's just something in the back of my head that I just can't switch off with just reminding me of just like the little crappy things. But... Yeah, I'm not saying, like, I still think that it's a good scene and it's a good fight. It's just not as good as I previously thought it was. It's it's definitely no Revenge of the Sith, where they're just flinging their lightsabers backwards and forwards in the air. <laughs> <laughs> and I like that fight as well, so. <laughs> uh, so then Ray asks, as soon as the fight's over, Ray asks Kylo to stop the attack on the Resistance he doesn't really say no or anything. He just simply asks her to join him. Uh, says it's time for the Jedi to end, the Sith to end, Snoke, Luke, all of them. It's time for them all to end. And then Kylo begins explaining that her parents are nobodies. She comes from nothing. She is nothing. Uh, well, he says, you're nothing. Your parents are nothing, but you, you're something to me. And then says that her parents sold her off for money, junkers money or whatever he says um, originally. And she's all like, no, 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 but... He says, no, you know, you know it to be true. Just think about it. You've known it to be true this entire time. You've just been non-accepting of the fact. And then offers out his hand and asks for her to join him once again. And it seems for a second that Ray is going to do it. But then we cut on over to Holdo. And as she's seeing the attack happen on the escaping ships, she's like, fuck this, I've got a plan. And she begins swinging her ship around to uh, face Snoke's ship. Uh, we do get a quick cut here of Husk um, where he's like, they point out that her ship's turning around and he's like, oh, big deal, there's no one on the ship. She's trying to draw attention away from escape pods. Don't worry about it. What an idiot. Little did he know. Uh, so then we cut to Ray again. and But instead of joining with Ray, she reaches out and attempts to pull the saber back towards herself, but Kylo stops at mid-pull, and they both end up splitting the lightsaber in half here, clearly destroying it. Um, you see it clearly destroyed once again at the end of the movie, but I think the important thing for, like, everyone, everyone when they saw the Rise of Skywalker trailer was like, but the lightsaber was destroyed, blah, 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 blah. The casing was destroyed, but it, at the end of the movie, you very clearly see that the crystal inside is intact. It's fine. Like, it's just the casing. I don't... Everyone's acting like it's such a big deal, but like we, we literally never see, unless you watch the deleted scene for Revenge of the Sith, you never see Luke make a new lightsaber between Empire and uh, Return of the Jedi. Like he starts that movie, he's got a new lightsaber. I swear if that happened today, they'd be like, oh, fucking, like, where, where'd he get that from? You to show me how he learned how to make that fucking lightsaber, I mean, like it, fucking SJW. It, lit- <laughs> it literally makes more sense now because she's got a set of books. Probably yeah, instructions she, can, she can learn. How to make a lightsaber 101. First Where's the index? Kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where do I start for this? Um, so, yeah, lightsaber gets split and then stuff blows up. We don't know what happens to her. Well, we do because we've seen the movie before. Uh, we then cut back to Phasma and she's ordered Finn and Rose to be executed. But right as the people raise up their vibro blade thingies to execute them, we cut back to Holdo and she's entered hyperspace directly 
into Snoke's, Snoke's ship, cutting it in half. Uh, still one of the coolest shots in the movie, in my opinion. I still love it. Definitely. Um, this shot's amazing. Yeah. And I loved it in the cinema. The whole cinema, like, I love how there's no sound. And it's just very quiet and they just, just lets it happen. You don't need some epic score or sound effect explosion or anything. It's just like silence as the the shit's cut, cut in half, yeah. Um, Finn and Rose amongst the havoc that has been caused by this attempt to make their way out of the place, but Phasma shows up. Um, she then t- uh, attempts to fight or sends troopers over to kill Finn and Rose at first, but then BB-8 comes in who's taken over a walker and <laughs> begins shooting things because BB-8, yeah. This is a, the one He's thing a that's... fucking boss. Yeah. <laughs> BB-8 is like... I can somehow control this, but that's perfectly fine. I mean, I guess he's got like heaps of, he does have enough hands, quote unquote hands, arms, things to control. I guess it's two prods apparently to control the damn thing. So sure. Um, Finn then ends up battling Phasma. And at one stage he appears to be knocked off the ship, but he comes back up. He then knocks Phasma over and she looks over with Cracker in her helmet. The first time you actually get to see some form of Gwendolyn and Christy actually at all. Um, and then she's like, you scum, you always wear scum. And he's like, rebel scum. And then she falls to her doom down below. She's not coming back for the next one. Fuck off, I don't want to hear the jokes. <laughs> <laughs> don't even start. She, she survived the trash compactor on, on Starkiller Base. Yeah. I'm sure she'll be fine. Yeah. Snow gets to fall. No, no. Emperor Palpatine gets to fall off a giant hole and he gets to come back, but... Phasma falls through a little bit of fire and she's dead. That's not equality. We need them to bring her back and fail to use her correctly again. Yeah. <laughs> For the third time. I feel like they brought her back solely so they, they could they could give her at least her death is better than trash compactor death. You know? They're like, eh. <laughs> at least let her die in some sort of cool way. Like her death and her death and if she's like the Boba Fett equivalent of just like kind of looking cool in the background, then her, <laughs> her death in the first one is the equivalent of Boba Fett just <laughs> dying by falling. Ah! Into the ah! <laughs> uh, we then cut back into the throne room and Kylo is waking up and Hux has found Snoke cut in half. He's looking very uh, <laughs> worried and confused. I like this too because you just see Snoke in the background just in two parts and Hux is just like. Oh, Supreme Leader. Oh, no. Uh, Kylo wakes up and says that Ray is the one that killed him, which I think is, of course, important information of how he keeps control of the First Order, I guess, coming into the next movie. Because, like, if they believed he did it, then, of course, I think maybe things would be different. But he's telling them that Ray is the one that killed their precious mm-hmm. Supreme Leader. So she's public enemy number one. Um, Kylo then says that they're going to take troops down to Crate. Huck says, no, like, who are you? He starts being like, who are you when the boss be around? He's like, the Supreme Leader is dead. But then Kylo turns around and begins choking him. And then Huck then replies, long live the Supreme Leader, which I always thought was, you know, good, good, good way to I, do the I classic line of the leader is that dead. Long moment. Live. I enjoy that moment where Huck is trying to decide if he wants to kill um, Kylo. Like, he has that moment of. Well, he's looking at him on the ground. Yeah, when he's looking at him on the ground, where it's almost like he could just finish him off then, he'd be done with him as well. Um, but he just wakes up too soon. Yeah. It's always like, well, would he have if he had stayed knocked out, had more time to think about it? I actually don't know if Hux could. I don't know. Like, Hux is, Hux is over here giving orders for plants to, to be blown up halfway across the universe, but could Hux actually, in person, like, shoot someone in the head. I don't know. We yeah. haven't actually seen him do anything like that. I feel like he's a he's a fucking keyboard warrior of First Order. <laughs> <laughs> the the First Order! Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, down on Crate, the, a sh- the ship comes flying in with some uh, TIE fighters behind it and they manage to close the, the ship, the, the base of the thing, I guess, as it comes in. But luckily the one ship that manages to get in is Finn and Rose. With BB-8, that that's the one like very. That's the one thing in the movie where I'm like, the chances and luck involved with them being the one shit that <laughs> manages to sneak through and clo- they even close the door on them or blow them up or shoot them or anything like that, and it happens to be them. Like, geez, that, <laughs> there's some good odds on those ones. Uh, Leia then says to use her personal code and call out for a distress signal, asking for any and all of their allies to come. Of course, 
Um, the First Order arrives and they got all these massive walkers and ships and whatever else. But then they also love the dump- new walkers. The with like the gorilla, yeah, poor arms. Yeah, they sense. look a lot. They look more sturdy, heftier, <laughs> yeah. heftier, yeah, <laughs> way more heftier and sturdier than the original ones. Uh, they also dumped down this cannon thing, which Finn explains is basically micro uh, Death Star technology, and that will be able to blast open the what's it? What do you call it? The like whatever hangar blast doors. door, hangar door, yeah, blast whatever. doors, blast yeah. door, yeah, it's proper word, I guess. Uh, so he's Finn. This is the thing. This is where you can see that Finn's finally like changing because he's like, we're gonna take out that cannon. He's the one like leading the mission. You know, he's is set from flight to fight. Yes, literally. Yeah, Lit- literally taking the the same flight from flight to fight is Finn as a character in this movie. Uh, so then they head out in their rust buckets to stop the door buster that the for- first door was put down with. Um. Rose at one, Rose is in one, Finn's in one, Poe's in one. Of course, I, I really like this scene because as they're going across Crate, which is this salt planet, um, I, I just think visually it's very cool. And it's, it's obviously it designed to be very cool, but it just looks so cool as they're going across it and the salt's all disappearing as the, the ships are going across it and you see the, the red base of the planet that's actually underneath the, the salt surface that they've got above it. And also like the cameo of Gareth Edwards, the director of Rogue One, is the person next to the soldier who like licks the salt and then it's like, uh, and then the person next to him, he kind of gives him a weird eyes. Yeah. The director of Rogue One. <laughs> as a, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Random like director. Who, who just cameo. tastes the ground? Um, well, if you get told it's salt, like well, as somebody know. who, as somebody who has once licked the freezer of a McDonald's freezer, um, if you yep. get told to do something, <laughs> sometimes you just do it. <laughs> I don't know what would be more dirtier, the salt of that planet or the freezer of the McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> Which one do you McDonald's. think, Kieran? I'm voting McDonald's. <laughs> uh, I don't want to go into it. Thank you. <laughs> He's like, I was in a hospital for two years. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk about this anymore without breaking my NDA. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had to sign an NDA. <laughs> Um, yeah, so as they were coming along, a bunch of TIE fighters get sent out after them, of course. A few too many. Uh, Rose, it seems, is about to get blown up when the Falcon swings in out of nowhere with Chewie in front driving the thing with a bunch of porgs in the co-pilot seats and Ray is in the uh, pi- piloting the gunner part of the... one of the gunner parts of the ship and she's shooting down and destroying the tires. Poe, then, as they're charging along towards the... Uh, th- once again, this is a very... It all ties in. Everything this was like, oh, everything in this movie makes sense. Like, literally at the start of the movie, Poe is seeing all of his forces, all of his troops being decimated, decimated. But he's like, it doesn't matter. We'll go. It doesn't matter. We're, we're going. There's one left. Go. You've got to do it. We've got to, got to do the job. Here he sees that everyone around him, all of his people are being destroyed. They're being picked off. He, he realizes that the odds of them actually pulling off what they're trying to do is. Very slim, much like it was at the start of the movie. But instead of pushing on with the job, he says, everyone retreat. Everyone come back. Um, We're not going to make it. Everyone retreat back to the thing. Um, Go back. What would you say? Growth. Oh, growth. I thought you said bro. And I was like, what do you mean? Be like, bro, you fucking pussy, bro. Bro, good call, mate. (laughs) You're like, no. That's what we in the business call character growth. In the the character growth. Yes, got it. Good job. Um, yeah, so he starts calling them back, but Finn does what uh, Poe basically did at the start of the movie. He shuts off his c- c- communications device, throws it away and says, I won't let them win. Uh, getting so angry and riled up here. And then he's yeah. heading towards the big cannon thing. Uh, by the way, I know some people on the internet like to believe that Finn was going to destroy this. He wasn't going to destroy it. He's fucking literally... No. <laughs> he's he's like a freaking to- ant trying to... <laughs> Take yeah. out a gun. He's like an ant <laughs> swinging up a fucking waterfall <laughs> trying to reach the gun and destroy it at the top of the thing. Like, he has no way he's going to pull this off. It, I, every time I watch the movie, I'm like, he's not even close. Like, his ship is getting destroyed. He's like in the middle of the blast radius. He's still so fucking far away. And for some reason, people are like, yeah, but he would have done it. I'm like, no. He wasn't even close. <laughs> he was not even close to do it. He's literally on a suicide mission for no like, he wouldn't have even done it and died at the same time. He wasn't going to do it at all. Mm. Um, but luckily, at the last second, Finn um, 
where he's about to die. Rose comes in and hits his ship out of the way, like with full fucking force. Uh, they somehow don't, both don't die when they hit the ground. And then Finn gets out of his ship, runs over to Rose's, begging why she would do that, why she would do that. And then she says what is actually probably my favorite line of the movie um, by saying, that's not how we're going to win. Uh, that's how we're going to win, fighting what we love, not fighting what we hate. Or vice versa. Because I think I wrote butchered it down it. Your favourite thing for the film, you wrote it wrong. You butchered, you butchered it. it. I believe the quote is, that's not how we're going to win. Not fighting what we hate, saving what saving we Saving what we love. Thank you. I did write it down right. Jesus yeah. Christ. You did write it down right. You've just... <sighs> I'm not going to mention long, it's why t- you fucked it it's up. A, it's a long two hours. I'm not going to mention it's why long, that was long. harder than it was. But It's also a long two hours. <laughs> we're still going. <laughs> Uh, and, and well, I think it's I think it's a combination of my barely written notes plus my fucking eyes like watering at this stage. <laughs> I'm like, what can I see through this waterfall of an eyelid? Um, I'm tearing up because I'm getting emotional about the movie. Everyone, it's it's so sad. Um, you know, I I think that is like I think I started loving that line the second time watching it because I remember the first time I watched it, I remember just walking out of the the cinema um, with my friend Sam and being like, I'm like I liked it but it was just a lot and I didn't know how I felt. You know, like I, I, I didn't hate it, but I was definitely like, whoa. Like, <laughs> you know, like I, it was just a lot to take in. Second time watching it, I really just feel, I feel like that line encompasses what the movie's about, you know? Like in a, in a lot of ways, what Star Wars is about and should be about, I think is the reason I like it so much. Um, Connick's back inside then explains that their signal has been reached, uh, I guess, in many places. And by reached, I guess that's kind of like looking at your messenger when you send a message to someone and it says it's been sent to them. <laughs> it's been seen. It's been seen, seen but, <laughs> but they're ignoring yeah. it. <laughs> I guess it's the equivalent of what's happening here because, yeah, the message is being received, but uh, they've re- received no responses. Leia, Leia then says, that's it then. Uh, there is no more asked, hope. Oh, is there three dots? <laughs> is it three dots? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it says seen, the three dots appear, and then they disappear again. And you're like, dun, well. dun, dun. <laughs> why does everyone hate me? Uh, yeah, Leia says there's no more hope left in the galaxy. And then as she says that, Luke then enters, uh, sits down, talks with Leia for a moment. He says that I can't, I can't save him, Leia. I held out hope for so long, uh, but now I know he's gone, she says. Then Luke says, no one's ever really gone, which of course is the line that the reused for the Rise of Skywalker trailer for talking about... Such um, a good line. P- 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 Palpatine in that one. No one's ever really gone. Um, also, Luke then- Leia makes sure to point out her hair has changed. Yeah. The, I, I, was, I was, it's The funny thing about Leia and these lines about, like, I know what you're going to say, my hair has changed. Or, like, all this or stuff. Like, it always seems fitting for the character of Leia to say seems, but also it's just sounds so much like what Carrie Fisher would say in real life if she was talking to someone yep. like these sorts of things. Like they do, I feel like in this movie, when they do the older version of Leia, and they did that in The Force Awakens and this, and I'm hoping obviously the, the continues in the rise, is the version of Leia that we get, the general Organa version of Leia, it feels like Leia. Um, definitely feels like a grown-up version of Leia from the original trilogy, but it feels like they put in more of that Carrie Fisher that people got to know post Star Wars as she started like writing her autobiographies and talking about the drug use stuff and doing more movies and uh, all, all that sort of stuff. So her, her her Leia character in these movies is always like, I think that's why I like it more as well. Like that's what I'm saying. My favorite version of Leia is from these movies, not the original trilogy. I, I just like her so much more as the leader here. Mm. Um, especially, I prefer Leia in Revenge of the Sith. To be honest. Just a little, baby. just a little baby, just a little baby, <laughs> little baby, baby, yeah. little baby, baby things are cute. Baby things. I mean, they, they yeah, are. It's true. I mean, we can say it. The fucking little yeetle. Um, <laughs> little, little old yeetle. Reference. Reference. Go listen to the Mandalorians. So uh, Luke then hands her the dice from Han's uh, ship. Uh, before kissing her on the head and then heading outside. How do you do that? What the? How, how do you do either of those things if he's not if he's not incorporeal? What the? Well, they disappear later when he, he dies. They're not real. Do they? But they do. They disappear. The dice literally disappear later. <laughs> oh, 
So, but the, how does she have weight in her hand? Like, how does she because, feel them? Because, I don't know, I guess you could make the argument that they're force objects, so, like, she can touch <laughs> oh, them. Oh, fuck off. I don't know. The fucking MacGuffin that is the force. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, the... F- I think in the in the in the movie that previous a couple scenes prior has now done uh, this movie does a lot for like what force ghosts can do right that other movies haven't because prior to this movie we thought force ghosts were able to appear and talk um, sit down apparently so that's other thing we know they can interact with real world objects because in the original trilogy they literally show force ghosts sitting on solid objects like properly sitting on. F- solid objects so they have shown that force ghosts aren't like ghosts that will float through things they can sit and interact with physical objects this movie then shows that force ghosts uh can not only interact with real world objects and sit on them but can also use force powers within that time because yoda literally calls down a fucking giant lightning strike and causes those trees to catch a fire um so in my in my eyes i don't really need a big explanation of how the dice are solid objects for Leia in a world where Yoda can call down a real physical lightning storm because they're similar similar terms to me. Like if Yoda also, can call like a lightning to... storm, he can make the, the dice feel solid for as long as he's doing his trick. You know what I mean? I'd also like to think about Force Ghost Yoda standing in a field practicing calling down lightning just just for hours. We got him, Levios. No, no, no. <laughs> Accio Lightning. <laughs> Sorry, Ashio Lightning. <laughs> Ashio Lightning. <laughs> Could we get our Harry Potter references in for this <laughs> episode of All Around, apparently? <laughs> Fucking going off. But yeah, I, I understand that people get like, hell to dice real, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, it's a Jedi mind trick, I guess. <laughs> like, if you, if, <laughs> if you can call down real lightning, and that's a thing that Yoda can do then in my mind, as long as Luke is doing what he's doing, the whole force projectural thing across the galaxy, he can also make the dice feel real for that same period of time. I'm willing to buy into that. I don't think they're too far out of the box. Um, okay. No? You wanna- no, yep. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> you want to fight me? Freaking dice. <laughs> Freaking dice. Um, so, yeah, Kylo then, as Luke, Luke walks out, by the way, this scene, everything about it so cool. From the second Luke starts walking outside that door, and that's why I don't get because everyone wanted this big epic Luke scene, but this is it, and I love yeah, you it. Get it? I love you it. Hundred percent get it. It's it's. But it doesn't. You get it, but at the same time, it doesn't break character from the Luke that we are sold throughout this entire movie. Yes, like. It does what we want, but at the same time, maintaining its value and image of Luke Skywalker. Yes. And I don't care what anybody says, I fucking love this Luke Skywalker. Like, this Luke Skywalker is what I, like, is almost what I wanted without knowing what I wanted. But this is exactly him, and it doesn't compromise on the choices or the character that is made to get those moments. Yes. I agree. And the and that's why I don't get it because every time I watch this, I'm like, this is so fucking cool. Why do people not think they got a cool Luke scene? This scene is so cool. Like, look how fucking badass he is, but he's not really there. It doesn't fucking matter. Like, <laughs> but that that you know what that makes it fucking cooler that he's not really there. Like, that makes it so much fucking cooler. We haven't seen anybody project themselves halfway the across fucking, the galaxy, like halfway across the fucking galaxy. Exactly. Like, fuck it up. Like, do, do you realize how much power that makes? Like, how strong that makes Luke? I mean, it's so powerful that he kills himself doing it. But um, anyway, <laughs> so yeah, Luke walks out. Kylo spots him, and then Kylo orders that ship to uh, for Luke to be blasted to smithereen. Just shoot that man! He, you know, lots of yelling and firing. Takes out Hux as well. Yeah, <laughs> Hux is. <laughs> is he sure you should do that. No, well, uh, it's, it's later where Hux is like, um, oh, what's he say? Like, we can stop now, or whatever. And then he like pisses him off or like throws him across the room, basically, or whatever. Hux in this movie is literally just comedy fodder. Punchy bag, yeah, <laughs> yeah, punchy bag. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he bl- blasts him all to hell, and then Kylo the whole time's like yelling more, more, more. And then eventually, when the smoke clears, Luke's still standing there amongst the 
the crater and he does the amazing thing of just brushing off his shoulder, which I always love. Just the, it's so <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Just it's such like that a new age like reference. Very, it feels like it's a very Mark Hamill thing. Do they, do like mm. I don't I don't know if it's a Luke thing. It's just it's as you say with um, how Carrie Fisher things flowed into General Organa. Yeah, that just feels like a small. Mark Hamill, Hamill thing, thing just flowed into that character. Yeah. It also makes sense character-wise because he's literally trying to get... He's trying to piss Kylo off that he will come down and face him so he can buy them time. So it's not like he's just doing it for shits and giggles. He's he's trying to piss off the angsty fucking Kylo, Kylo Ren, which of course works because Kylo's then uh, orders to be taken down to Luke's level. Uh, while this is all happening, um, Finn manages to sneak Rose inside. Poe then clicks onto the fact that Luke is buying them time, so he goes to look for a way out following the crystal critters, the crystal foxes, and follows them to the back of are they the important? cave. Or are they just coincidentally they're on that planet? Are, are they, they like what? the crystal, the the force dogs or whatever we saw in Rebels? No, they're just creatures for the planet as far as no. okay. I'm aware. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they have any like force thing. They're just cool foxes that are na- native to the planet, I guess. Um, everyone, it's funny when Poe's like, come on, follow us all back this way. And everyone looks around to make sure that following his order is okay. And they all look to, to Leia. And then she's like, what are you looking at me for? Follow what he, he says. But I love how they show her, give that. He was slut. just held hot. He was just reprimanded for well, yeah, mutiny. That, yeah. It makes sense why what? everyone looks, it does make sense why everyone double checks with her. Like it, it fits why they all double check with her. I just like how she gets, she's like, no, do what he says. But then they make sure to show her, give like that little sly smirk of her, like being like, yes, Poe. Like, like the, the fact that he called everyone <laughs> back before and did the right thing. And now he's like taking up charge to make the escape. He's not trying to go in and fight. He's trying to know that this is one of the times that you fucking run. And now's the time to escape, you know, run now, fight later. And he's, he's, I think she's appreciating that he's doing like smart tactical moves, not um, head on offensive moves. So Ray is above in the Falcon and looking for a way to, to save them all. And she foxes, uh, for foxes. She spots all the foxes exiting the cave. So she goes down to ground, ground level and she manages to use the old Jedi trick of raising a few pebbles. Uh, back at Kylo and Luke, um, Luke, is, Luke says, I failed you, Ben. I'm sorry. To which Kylo then just yells back, I'm just sure you are. And then <laughs> <laughs> Kylo then begins mocking Luke, saying how he'll kill everyone. Um, I'll, I'll kill you. I'll kill Ray. The Jedi will end, all this sort of thing. And then Luke gets, again, amazing. Every word you just said is wrong, which I always love the, <laughs> every, the way he delivers that thing to him. Uh, and then he comes in and says, the rebellion will be reborn today. The war is just beginning and I will not be the last Jedi. Uh, which is another, another thing because the movie literally says, has Luke say he will not be the last Jedi. But for some reason, people still think that Ryan Johnson killed the Jedi and all this sort of stuff yeah, and whatever exactly. else. I'm like, they literally say, like, I understand that people, for whatever reason, cling to that whole Kylo line of burn the past, forget it. And they think that Ryan Johnson made a movie about destroying the past and like hating all the Star Wars movies or whatever. But his movie isn't about destroying the past or whatever. It's it's about like learning from past Building things. Building the future. And, yeah, like it's 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 not like <laughs> just because a character in the movie says that doesn't mean that's actually what he believes and thinks is right. That's not actually what's happening and like yeah literally Jedi, uh, Luke the person who thinks the Jedi are going to die and wants the Jedi to end his one of his last lines is I will not be the last Jedi um, Ray then raises all the rocks and Finn runs out and braces her and the resistance makes its way outside of the cave and then we cut back to Luke and then he says strike me down with anger and I'll always be with you just like your father and Kylo runs through Luke as it's revealed he's not really there um and once again every time after the first time i watched the movie i appreciated how cool it is to watch it and see the um uh like you, you, when you, whenever his feet are moving and stuff you can't see the uh you can't see there's no salt being kicked up or yes like any marks being left in the ground whereas kylo has very obvious yes imprints and indentation in his movements yes yeah. and i always thought that was really cool like a, a small detail that you can appreciate the second time around um so then he says the last line which is see you around kid 
and he disappears, which is the one a really cool shirt I have. I was wearing it yesterday, actually. Where it's got Luke on it. It says, see you around, kid. That's quite cool. Uh, then we cut back to Luke and he looks over as he sees the twin sons appearing and he takes his final breath and he becomes one with the force. I, I hate saying this, dying this, because he doesn't, I mean, he's not dead, dead. Technically dying. Yeah. I mean. He just, it just, even re-watching this movie, that scene still chokes me up. Because of just the symbolism of having the two sons there. Oh, ch- choke choke you up. I was crying again. I cry every time. <laughs> yeah. I was like like just like for whole for his he is probably one of like the first, if not one of the best characters, in my opinion, of stories that we've watched and, and grown up with and has aged with us or you know even though i wasn't even alive when the original movie was released it, it's just something that's matured and grown and, and and we've fulfilled his journey like as a story together so i don't know it just means a lot it's really cool mm. and he, he actually gets a really cool story not just a boring one no, that exactly. people want him to have um so then yeah we get a scene of ray and leia obviously stopping and being able to feel and sense his passing um, they then board the Falcon and Ray and Poe, uh, Ray and Poe, I've wrote down for some reason, Ray and, <laughs> and Mr. Kylo Ren uh, connect for one final moment. I like the way they shoot this because Kylo obviously walks into the room and this is where he sees the dice disappear. He sees the dice on the, sh- the, the floor of the room and he walks over and he picks them up and then they disappear in his hand. And obviously he's recognizing wow. the dice oh, because okay. he would have been aboard the Falcon a lot when he was a kid. So he knows mm-hmm. what they are and he sees them disappear. Um, then he looks up, obviously, you can see Ray standing above there. But I like how the way they shoot it because she presses the button to close the, the Falcon's ramp and then, like, symbolizes that, like, she cuts, she forcibly cuts off the connection at this point. And the first time I watched the movie, I thought that was her, like, cutting it off for good, like, deleting it. It's gone for forever. But I feel like she's just making the choice. And then in The Rise of Skywalker, she can make the choice to have the connection return Re- if she wants to. Return. Yeah. So, um, Inside the Falcon, Ray is meeting Poe for the first time <laughs> and talking with... Which is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> like, you're like, holy shit, you guys are only just meeting? What the fuck? Yeah, well, it's like Poe comes back, Ray then takes off in the Falcon. You know, like, there's no... She was at the base, the Resistance base, for, like, yep. to quarrel for, like, two <clears throat> hot seconds, basically, before she left <clears throat> again, so... Um, Apparently, I read that's a Colin Trevorrow request. That they that meet. they meet in the film for okay. a potential third the, what movie he was going to be too. Well, it just makes more, well, it makes more sense even for the one we're going to get because it's like, do you want to yeah. spend time explaining? The, yeah, I guess just easy setup for any person. Yeah, too. exactly. Yeah. Um. Then, uh, yeah, we get the whole. Th- we don't need to go over it, but obviously the scene where Finn Finn pulls out the 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 thing for Rose on the bench the blanket or whatever we see the the jedi books there whether or not they become important in the actual next movie or maybe they won't even use them in the next movie and they'll just be like random spin-off material and be like yeah they still exist or whatever yeah nobody uh, cares about the wills no no one cares about the wills. Do with wills. No, nobody wants to be a scholar no. of any kind of the wills no no, no one wants to be any no one everyone, it makes no sense i'd say that no, people na- hate, name recognition uh, people who don't like the word people who don't like the word wills are probably just idiots you know that's for sure um <laughs> So then the movie, we see Ray sitting down and talking with Leia. They have a a, a couple hot seconds as they explain and talk about Luke and, you know, being like, oh, she passed away and is joined with Force or whatever. And she's like, yeah, I know, but it's fine. And then Ray asks, how do we rebuild a rebellion from this? And then Leia responds by saying, we have everything we need. And then they show the most important thing, which is a pork, which is everything you need to to build a rebellion. And hope because they're gonna have good nutritious subs- sustenance <laughs> for their army with these porgs on the ship. God. That's why there's gonna be no porgs during Rise of Skywalker because the resistance is eaten through their pork supplies. I can't even. Then <laughs> we cut over to the. It's always funny rewatching the movie because even though I know what's happening, I'm still just like, it's so odd. This movie is 
like it's because you think the movie's going to end there, like da, 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 credits, of course, but no, and then it cuts back to Canto Bite, and we see these kids all telling the story of what Luke has done, um, him facing down the First Order. Obviously, this you could say this is like months later, weeks later, who knows? Either way, it's like some point later. Um, and then the random person comes in and yells at all the kids. Broom Boy walks outside and does the very subtle detail of force pulling the broom to himself, which no one what? noticed for like the first. Yeah, oh my God, it's crazy. I've never seen it happen before. <laughs> I noticed it on my first viewing. Thank you very much. I'm smart. This is a revelation. It's a revelation. I always find, I, I still just appreciate that they don't cut to a close up or anything. Like it's just. It's just there. It's just like he force pulls the broom, but they don't make it a big thing, you know. Um, and then he looks out over the stars, sees a ship taking off or something like that, looks down at the resistance symbol on his finger, and then he turns the broom um, from a tool into a weapon is the way I take it as he, like, races up into the sky, kind of like Luke Skywalker with a, a lightsaber after hearing all these tales, of course, and then we mm. cut to credits. Dun, dun. <laughs> oh my god it's is that wow that's that's the notes we've done the thing good job everyone so Again, as we normally it happens when we do this kind of thing gone as long as the actual movie <laughs> And I, th- I think the original one probably went for as long as the movie. So I've now, now I've done two episodes talking about the movie where they've both gone longer as the movie. Yeah. It's gone so long that uh, Google Hangouts just asked if we're still here. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, Netflix. <laughs> um, all right. So where does everyone want to rank this? Of course, that is the important part the final time we will be doing this for what i'm going to say is our official list and then i'm going to make everyone force in rise of skywalker hot whimly um but whatever you put here is what you consider your official star wars list um ash or kieran who wants to go first i want to put anyone under the hot bus first or <laughs> who, who who does i'll go first i'll i'll go i volunteer first. as tribute okay kieran. i volunteer as tribute okay kieran tell me where you're going to put it and then um, i'll read off your official list put it at the fourth spot please fourth spot so you're moving jedi up rogue one up empire up oh no no, no. third spot even sorry sorry i want it before sorry, Force sorry. awakens sorry. no no no. so put it leave empire where it was no no no. leave empire where it was oh my god and then just put where rogue one was put last jedi Okay, so third. No, so Last Jedi is third, yes. <laughs> Fuck it. <hell. laughs> I don't know why that was so hard. <laughs> so Kieran's official ranking of the Star Wars movies is now <laughs> Attack of the Clones, The Phantom Menace, Solo, A New Hope, Revenge of Sith, Force Awakens, Empire Strikes Back, The Last Jedi, Rogue One, and Return of the Jedi. Ash, where are you placing this movie? I know it's probably recency bias, but I'm going to put this at number one. Well, Ooh, shit. Shit. Them see fighting words on the internet. Don't let anyone hear you. <laughs> I mean, it's so close. It's not like there's a massive difference between all of them. That makes Ash's list. Attack of the Clones, The Phantom Menace, A New Hope, Revenge of the Sith, Solo, Return of the Jedi, uh, Force Awakens, Rogue One, Empire Strikes Back, and The Last Jedi. My position for this movie... Kieran just put a funny face. <laughs> Sorry, I just, every time we talk about Ashley's list, it just forces me to look at Ashley believing that Solo is a better movie than Revenge of the Sith <laughs> and A New Hope every fucking Oh, it triggers me I so mean, badly. <laughs> <clears throat> the truth hurts sometimes. I am placing this movie also at my number one slot. Oh, oh shit! I, I didn't see that coming. So when I went into it, I wasn't sure if it would end up. Uh, I thought it was going to end up second. But when I did this rewatch, by the time I got to the end of the movie, I was like, I think even when we were talking about it last episode. Yeah. Like, yeah, Return of the Jedi is going to be my number one film. 
Yeah, well, yeah, it was definitely a re- this rewatch when I was watching it. I was like, this is the Star Wars movie. Here's the thing with Star Wars lists they pr- they can change constantly. It depends, like, whatever else is happening or whatever. And I don't mean like weekly, but, you know, this could change next year, obviously, and whatever else if we did another one of these, which we're not. But if we did another one, it would probably change. But at the moment, re watching all these movies back to back to back to back, Last Jedi was the one that I enjoyed the most. I think um, it has the most interesting themes in it. Um, that I find more relevant and interesting to watch today, uh, especially like what this movie does with Poe's storyline. Um, I, I enjoy what they do with Finn, even though people think that, you know, obviously the argument is that Finn does nothing in this. I really like what they do with uh, Luke in this movie and what his storyline is about. I feel like this movie is just a really good, <laughs> interesting Star Wars movie. I don't know. I honestly don't know. There's nothing I don't like about it. And I'm not saying that there's other things I dislike about other Star Wars movies, but I just feel like today, in the 2019, Last Jedi is the most enjoyable Star Wars movie, the most interesting Star Wars movie to watch um, and think about and watch and whatever else. And now it's not just the Porks, not just the Porks, but they are important also. The Porks are also important. So my final list (laughs) is Attack of the Clones, Solo, The Phantom Menace, A New Hope, Force Awakens, Empire Strikes Back, Revenge of the Sith, Rogue One, Return of the Jedi, and The Last Jedi. I feel like I have a spicy list with Revenge of the Sith so high, uh, so high as well. <laughs> yeah, crazy. And Solo, so low. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> you fucking <laughs> Ashley, stop! <laughs> <sighs> it's hot, 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 hot times over here. Um, I was going to. I know we said we'll talk about the book, but honestly, I think we'll say that. We'll do that next. <laughs> we should episode. do that next. We'll episode. do the next episode. This episode's gone for so long. Yeah, I was like, if so we- sorry for you, those people who stuck around, <laughs> hoping to hear about talk about the book when we teased it earlier in the episode. But <laughs> sucker, this is like Suckers. watching the seven, the six o'clock news every night where they're like, <laughs> all right, we'll wait till the end of the show for this. <laughs> It, well, it was going to make sense if we had time just to kind of continue talking about what happened, yeah. but it'll, it'll also make to- uh, sense to talk about it before next week. And next week's episode, we will be giving our final thoughts going into Rise of Skywalker, dropping our five hot predictions of what we think is going to happen. <gasps> um, and then that's it. That's, that's, that's it. The week after the movie's out. So. One question I forgot to ask. Mm. Why is C-3PO's arm gold again? Uh, because and why was it read originally? Oh my god! No, we're not, we just said we're not talking about the fucking book, and you want me to talk about the fucking gold? The okay, it's up? about the book. We'll definitely need the answer to this. <laughs> that's, that's in a different book, though, right? The red arm thing literally has a whole comic about it. <laughs> oh, it's a comic. It's not Resistance Reborn. That's what no, I was, no, no, you no. know. Okay. No, yeah, yeah. No, no. It's let me give the long, long short answer. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Fucking hell. It does not matter. They sold fucking toys is what the, the, the bond thing was. They got to sell different C-3PO toys. Um, please share this show on social media, social me- media, media, and tag at Explosion Pod if you're enjoying it. Tell your friends to rate on Apple Podcasts or Podchaser. All Around Explosion is a Darth production of ExplosionNetwork.com, which you can find many more shows, including what do you want to want to watch? What you want to want to watch is because it's in all. <laughs> <laughs> What do you want to watch? Yeah, you can also find what do you want to watch? Our fortnightly movie and TV podcast. You should also go check out our Mandalorian after show called the Mandalorians, which is on YouTube, explosionnetwork.com, and all good podcasting services. Search for that one as well. If you're watching the Mandalorian on Disney Plus, you can follow me on Twitter at vivaldil v i v a l a d i l. Follow Ash on Twitter at Ashley Hobby a s h l e y h o b l e y. You can follow Kieran on Twitter at ya boy Ringo. And until next week, may the force be with you always. <laughs>